In a world brimming with unsolved mysteries, some stories stand out, gripping our imaginations and haunting our dreams. Today, we're going to delve into the shadowy realm of the vanished, people who stepped into the unknown and never returned. So we're going to talk about a lot of missing persons, from the enigmatic disappearance of a rock star to the baffling fate of a World War II pilot, and even the disturbing vanishing of a young actress. So join me into this exploration of this iceberg of cold cases, lost people, and disappearances. When people go missing, where do they go? Well, that's the fun of it, right? It's interesting for us to think about these mysteries that we don't have the answers to. So because of that, let's talk about a bunch of people who went missing and some theories about how that happened. Also guys, I think that only like 3% of you are actually subscribed to my channel, which is kind of crazy. We gotta get the number up, right? Come on. Also, I have a Discord if you wanna join it, and an Instagram and a Twitter. Anyways, let's get on with this. Come on. D.B. Cooper. D.B. Cooper's case is like something strange out of a Hollywood movie. Back in 1971, this mysterious guy hijacks a boning 727. He's all cool and composed, wearing a suit and sunglasses. The story goes that he hands a note to a flight attendant saying he's got a bomb. He shows her a briefcase with wires and red sticks, making everyone believe that it's actually real. So Cooper demands $200,000 in cash, and that's like over a million in today's money because of inflation. Plus, four parachutes and a fuel tank standing by in Seattle to refuel the plane for a getaway. The authorities play along, not wanting to risk anything. They meet his demands and Cooper releases all 36 passengers when they land in Seattle. But the crew stays and he instructs them to fly towards Mexico City. Here's where it gets even wilder. Somewhere between Seattle and Reno, in the thick of a stormy night, Cooper jumps out of a plane with a parachute and the ransom money. He just vanishes into thin air. Nobody knows if he survived the jump. The plane lands safely, but there's no sign of Cooper. For years, the FBI keeps the case open, calling it Nordjack for Northwest Hijacking. They analyze everything from the ransom money to a clip on Ty Cooper left behind. In 1980, a kid finds some of the ransom money by the Columbia River, but it only deepens the mystery. Despite massive manhunts and investigations, D.B. Cooper's identity and fate remain one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in U.S. criminal history. Some say he didn't survive the jump, and others believe that he's still out there, having pulled one of the most daring escapes ever. Either way, it's a story that continues to captivate and puzzle people all over the world. The Colony of Roanoke. The Colony of Roanoke is another one of those stories that's got more twists than a snake in a maze. Back in the late 1500s, a group of English settlers lands on Roanoke Island off the coast of what's now North Carolina, which, hey, that's where I'm from. W North Carolina, W NC North Carolina, Riz, Ohio, not Ohio, actually North Carolina, <laughs> skibbity toilet. Anyways, they're led by John White, who eventually leaves to get supplies from England. When he returns in 1590, the whole colony has just vanished, poof, like they were never there. What's super spooky is the only clue left behind. The word Croatoan is carved into a tree. Some think it might be a reference to the Croatoan tribe on a nearby island, suggesting maybe the settlers went there. But there's no solid proof of this. Other theories range from a massacre by local tribes to integration with native tribes, or even a move inland. But honestly, nobody really knows for sure what happened here. Over the years, this whole Roanoke mystery has become the stuff of legends. Archaeologists and historians keep digging around, looking for any new clues. They found some intriguing stuff, like English artifacts and Native American sites, but nothing that completely solves the mystery here. Roanoke's disappearance is a chilling reminder of how tough life was for early colonists and how many unknowns they faced. It's like a real-life ghost story where the ghosts are an entire colony and their whispers are just echoes in old letters and carvings. It keeps you wondering what really happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. Amelia Earhart Amelia Earhart's disappearance in 1937 is as mysterious as it is famous. She was attempting to fly around the world when she vanished over the Pacific Ocean. Despite being an experienced Experienced pilot, Earhart's last messages indicated trouble with navigation and fuel. The most common theory is that she just crashed into the ocean. However, some speculate she might have landed on an uninhabited island. Numerous expeditions have tried to find wreckage or evidence, but none have conclusively solved the mystery. All these years later, it's like been 90 years almost. Earhart's disappearance remains a symbol of adventure and the unknown, captivating people's imaginations and inspiring countless theories and stories about her fate. Henrik Müller. Henrik Müller, often known as 
as Gestapo Müller, was a high-ranking Nazi official who mysteriously disappeared at the end of World War II. As the chief of the Gestapo, Hitler's secret police, he was a key player in the Holocaust and other war crimes. But when the war ended, Müller vanished without a trace. Unlike many Nazi leaders, he was never found or tried. Theories about his fate abound. Some believe he was killed in the war's final days, others think he escaped to South America or even worked for a foreign intelligence agency. Despite various investigations and searches, Müller's fate remains one of the most enduring mysteries of the Nazi era. Frank Morris Frank Morris, along with accomplices John and Clarence Anglin, pulled off one of the most famous prison escapes in history from Alcatraz in 1962. These guys were clever. They made dummy heads from soap, toilet paper, and real hair to fool the guards. Then, using tools fashioned from spoons and a drill made from a vacuum motor, they dug their way out of their cells and fled the prison on a raft made of raincoats. Despite a massive manhunt, they were never caught. Some say they drowned, but others believe they made it to freedom. Their fate remains a captivating mystery, fueling endless speculation and intrigue. Jim Thompson Jim Thompson, known as the Silk King of Thailand, mysteriously disappeared in 1967 while on a holiday in the Cameron Highlands of Malaysia. An American businessman, Thompson revitalized the Thai silk industry and was a former OSS, precursor to the CIA, operative. His disappearance sparked numerous theories. Did he get lost in the jungle? Was he kidnapped? Or did his past and espionage catch up with him? Despite extensive searches, no trace of him was ever found. His disappearance remains one of Southeast Asia's most enduring mysteries, blending elements of intrigue, espionage, and traditional folklore. Amy Lynn Bradley's disappearance is a real-life maritime mystery. In 1998, she was on a family cruise in the Caribbean when she suddenly vanished from the ship. What makes her case particularly haunting is that there were sightings of her after she disappeared, leading to theories that she might have been kidnapped and forced into human trafficking. Despite these reported sightings and extensive investigations, no definitive answers have emerged. Her family continues to search for her, holding on to hope amidst a sea of unanswered questions. Amy's case is a chilling reminder of how quickly someone can disappear, leaving behind a trail of mysteries and heartache. This this kind of stuff really gets to me personally low-key. This kind of stuff is like scary, because this is like the kind of stuff that can happen to anybody, you know? Like a lot of these missing persons things are like, oh, if if you if, if this guy went hiking up in the Alps, you know, for like 40 days. And that's like, okay, it's interesting, right? But it doesn't really like scare me, you know? But but this one is just like some girl on a cruise, you know, it's like like a lot more like realistic and you know, I don't know, scary. <laughs> Benjamin Bathurst. Benjamin Bathurst's vanishing act is straight up eerie. In 1809, he's a British diplomat in Germany, right in the middle of the Napoleonic Wars, like Napoleon. <laughs> he's traveling incognito, trying to keep a low profile. Then during a pit stop at an inn in the small town of Pearlberg, he steps out of the inn after dinner and boom, he's gone. Like literally disappeared in thin air. The weird part, his horses and carriage are still there waiting. A massive search kicks off and they find nada. Some say he was snatched by French spies or local bandits, others think he just ditched his old life, but with zero solid leads, Benjamin Bathurst's disappearance remains one of those wild unsolved mysteries that's as baffling as it is intriguing. Shoddy, this guy's name is Benjamin Bathurst? <laughs> it's just funny, I don't know. Brian Schaefer. Brian Schaefer's case is like a puzzle with missing pieces. In 2006, he's a med student at Ohio State University. One night he goes out to a bar with friends to kick off spring break. Here's where it gets bizarre. He's seen on CCTV entering a bar but never coming out. Like how does someone just disappear from a crowded bar without being seen? Police scour the footage but there's no trace of him leaving. The exit routes are all on camera yet there's no sign of him. Theories range from him starting a new life to meeting with foul play, or even an accident. But without solid leads, his disappearance remains a mystery that haunts his family and friends. Mary Celeste The Mary Celeste is one of those ghost ship tales that's just too wild. In 1872, this ship sets sail from New York to Genoa, but is found drifting near Portugal with no one on board. The crew's belongings, the cargo, everything's intact, but the crew, gone, vanished. The lifeboat's missing too. But there's no sign of struggle or bad weather, so what happened? Theories range from piracy to an explosion from alcohol fumes, but nothing's ever proven. The Mary Celeste becomes this enduring maritime mystery. This one I guess isn't really a missing person so much as it is a missing, well it's not, I guess the ship is a missing, it's like a group of people, I guess, but it's a ship, but the Mary Celeste is a ship. So I guess I'm kind of cheating here guys, my bad. Marvin Clark. Marvin Clark, now here's a story that's got a twist. In 1926, this elderly guy from Oregon goes missing after boarding a bus 
to visit his daughter for the weekend, but he never shows up. Decades later, they find a skeleton in the woods, and with some modern DNA magic, they figure out that it's Marvin. But here's the kicker. He had been missing so long, his case was forgotten, and the skeleton was just marked as unidentified. It's like he became a ghost in his own life, a reminder of how someone can disappear and become a mystery, even to their own family. That's crazy to think, like, how he got from the bus to in the middle of the woods just as a skeleton, you know, it's yeah, awesome. Well, not awesome, like, it's like, oh, that's so cool that happened to him, you know, I mean, it's just, like, interesting. Warren and Spencer. Warren and Spencer's disappearance is a modern-day enigma. In 1998, these two bright Wall Street traders, Nicholas Warren and Leo Spencer, just drop off the grid. They're successful, making big bucks, but suddenly they're gone. Their apartments left like they just stepped out for a coffee. Money, passports, all still there. No signs of foul play or a planned escape. The twist? Their trading strategies were super secretive, kind of like financial magicians. So did they run because of a risky deal gone bad? Maybe they just wanted to ditch the high pressure life? Their vanishing act leaves a trail of unanswered questions and theories about the high stakes world of the Wall Street and the secrets that it hides. I don't know, I I've read American Psycho, so. Yeah. Louis Le Prince. This guy's story is like the prologue to the movie industry with a mystery twist. In 1890, he's about to showcase his invention, a motion picture camera in the UK and in the US. But here's the catch. He boards a train in France and never gets off. His luggage is still there, but no Louis. Louis, Louis whatever. I don't know how, to, I, I never know how to pronounce that name. It, it, does anybody know how to say that name? Anyways, no one ever knows what happened. Was it an accident, suicide, or something more sinister? Some even speculate Edison had something to do with his disappearance. Considering the patent wars, Louis Le Prince's vanishing is not just a personal tragedy. It's like a cliffhanger in the story of cinema's early days. Harold Holt. Harold Holt, Australia's prime minister goes for a swim in 1967 at Cheviot Beach and just disappears. No body, no nothing. It's a shocker. A world leader just vanishing like that. Theories go wild. Was it a Chinese submarine, a CIA plot, or just a tragic swimming accident? The lack of evidence makes it all more baffling. Holt's disappearance leads to changes in national security protocols and fuels conspiracy theories for decades. Jean Spangler. Jean Spangler, a Hollywood actress in the 1940s, she's got this air of glamour, but also mystery. Or I guess it's Jean, my bad guys. <laughs> in 1949, she leaves her house in Los Angeles, saying she's off to meet her ex-husband and then go to a film set. But Jean never returns. Two days later, her purse is found in Griffith Park with a cryptic note addressed to a Kirk, hinting at a possible meeting in a pregnancy. Was it a love affair gone wrong, an illegal abortion, or something more sinister? Despite links to high-profile names and extensive investigations, the case remains unsolved. Her disappearance is a blend of Hollywood noir and real-life mystery. Dorothy Arnold. Imagine this. New York City, 1910. Dorothy's a socialite, the kind with a life straight out of a page-turner novel. One day, she goes shopping for a dress, waves goodbye to a friend on Fifth Avenue, and just like that, she's gone, vanished into the city's bustling streets. Her family's search is massive, splashed across the papers, but no Dorothy. Theories? Maybe amnesia? Or she ran away? Or something more tragic? Her disappearance becomes this enduring mystery, a snapshot of an era where someone could just disappear in the heart of New York City, leaving behind whispers and wonders. Ray Grigar. Ray Grigar, this one's got a true crime podcast vibe. In 2005, he's a district attorney in Pennsylvania, known for his tough stance on crime. One day, he takes a drive and never comes back. His car is found in a parking lot, his laptop in a river, minus the hard drive. What's up with that? Was it foul play, a voluntary disappearance, or something to do with his high-profile cases? Despite loads of theories and investigations, no one knows. It's like he's stepped into a fog of mystery, leaving a trail of unanswered questions about what really happened to Ray Grigar. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. This one's like a modern Bermuda Triangle story. In 2014, this plane just vanishes with 239 people on board. The world is glued to the news, but there's hardly any trace. It sparks one of the biggest searches in aviation history, but the mystery deepens. Bits of wreckage turn up miles away, but the black box in the main wreckage is still missing. Theories range from hijacking to pilot suicide or a catastrophic technical failure. The passengers and crew become part of this tragic and perplexing aviation mystery, leaving families and the world in a state of suspended disbelief, pondering over what really happened on that ill-fated flight. 
Abigail Williams. Imagine a cold February day in 2017, Indiana. Abigail Williams, only 13, and her friend Liberty German go hiking in the Delphi Historic Trails, but they never return. Next day, their bodies are found near the trail. Here's the eerie part. Liberty's phone has a recording of a man saying, down the hill, believed to be the killer. Despite this clue and a sketch released by the police, the case remains unsolved. It's a haunting reminder of the dangers lurking in unexpected places, turning a simple hike into a tragedy and leaving a community and a nation searching for answers. Sebastiano Di Gaetano. This one's a deep dive into the past. In 1913, Di Gaetano, a Sicilian immigrant in Louisiana, just disappears. He's involved in some shady business, like mafia-level stuff. One day he's there, the next, poof, gone. No trace, no clues. Back in those days, the mafia's word was law and snitches didn't last long. Did he cross the wrong people, or did he just skip town? With the Omerta Code of Silence, nobody's talking, leaving this guy's fate as murky as the underworld he was a part of. Richard Colvin Cox. This one's straight out of a military mystery novel. In 1950, Richard Colvin Cox, a West Point cadet, just vanishes. He's seen at the hotel with a mysterious man, and then nothing. The army, the FBI, they all search, but there's no sign of Cox, or the mysterious man. Some theories are that maybe Maybe he was recruited for a secret mission, or he defected to the Soviet Union during the Cold War, or maybe it was something more personal. His disappearance remains one of the most baffling cases in military history, a puzzle that's yet to be solved, leaving a shadow over West Point's storied history. Here's a tale that's part adventure, part mystery. In 1961, Michael Rockefeller, heir to the Rockefeller fortune, is on an expedition in New Guinea to collect tribal art, but things take a wild turn when his boat overturns. While his companion gets rescued, Michael tries to swim to shore but is never seen again. Did he drown or was he possibly captured by local tribes? Some even suggest he might have lived among the tribes. Despite numerous searches and investigations, his fate remains a mystery. Michael's disappearance in the remote jungles of New Guinea adds an almost mythical layer to the Rockefeller legacy. Dorothy Forstein. This one's straight out of a 1940s noir thriller. Dorothy Forstein, a Philadelphia housewife, disappears from her home in 1949. Years later, she had been brutally attacked in her home. An incident that never got solved, but this time she just vanishes, leaving behind her husband and kids. There's no sign of a struggle, no clues to where she might have gone. The theories range from abduction to a voluntary disappearance due to her traumatic past. Dorothy's case remains one of those perplexing mysteries, a story of a seemingly normal life that gets suddenly turned into a haunting question mark. Mary Boyle. Mary Boyle's disappearance is a heart-wrenching case that's left a mark in Ireland. In 1977, six-year-old Mary vanishes while visiting her grandparents in County Donegal. She's playing outside one minute, and the next minute, she's gone. Despite extensive searches, no trace of Mary's ever found. Her disappearance is the longest-running missing child case in Ireland, and it's shrouded in controversy and allegations of mishandling. Was she abducted, lost in the vast countryside, or something else? Mary's story isn't just a family nightmare, it's become a symbol of every parent's worst fear, and a poignant reminder of the fragility of childhood innocence. Lee Roberts. Lee Roberts' story is like a road trip with a mysterious end. In 2000, this vibrant young woman leaves North Carolina, hey, that's where I'm from, driving cross country to find herself. But things take a dark turn when her Jeep is found wrecked and abandoned in Washington state. The weird part, no sign of Lee, and the car seems to have been lived in after the crash. Her belongings are scattered around and a cryptic note is found. Was it an accident or did she choose to disappear? With sightings and theories swirling, Lee's case remains an unsolved puzzle. A journey that started with self-discovery, but ended in a baffling disappearance. Aaron Gillern. Aaron Gillern's disappearance in Vienna in 2007 is as perplexing as it is tragic. Working at the United Nations, he's living the dream. But then one evening, everything changes. After a distressing call to his mother, Aaron vanishes. CCTV footage shows him running, seemingly in fear, but then the trail goes cold. Police initially suggest suicide, but evidence and family belief point to foul play. The the lack of clear answers and possible mishandling of the case adds layers of complexity. Aaron's story is not just a personal tragedy, it's a narrative that questions the adequacy of international justice and the plight of expats in foreign lands. Madeleine McCann Madeleine McCann's case is one that's captured global attention. In 2007, while on holiday in Portugal with her family, three-year-old Madeleine disappears from her bed in a holiday apartment. The world watches as an extensive search begins. Theories abound. Was she abducted?
abducted, wandered off, or something worse. A lot of suspects are named, but then they're all cleared, and no definitive answers emerge. The McCanns face both sympathy and scrutiny. Despite one of the most high-profile missing child investigations, Madeline's fate remains unknown, turning her story into a never-ending cycle of hope, despair, and the agonizing reality of not knowing. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Now this is a story wrapped in poignancy and poetry. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, the famed author of The Little Prince, is also a pioneering aviator. In 1944, during a reconnaissance mission for the Free French Air Force over the Mediterranean, he vanishes without a trace. It's not until 1998 that a fisherman finds his bracelet, and then later wreckage of his plane is also recovered. But the exact circumstances of his disappearance remains a mystery. Was it enemy fire, a mechanical failure, or something else? Saint Exupéry's disappearance adds a layer of tragic romance to his legacy, blurring the lines between his art and his enigmatic end. Alright guys, that was layer one. Let's get into layer two. Henry Hudson. Imagine the harsh, icy wilderness of the Canadian Arctic in 1611. Here, the famed English explorer Henry Hudson faced a dire situation. After a grueling winter trapped in the ice-filled Hudson Bay, discontent brewed among his crew. A mutiny ensued, leading to Hudson his teenage son and seven loyal crew members being cast adrift in a small open boat. Swallowed by the immense, unforgiving seas of James Bay, they vanished without a trace, leaving behind a legacy etched in the icy waters that now bear Hudson's name. Sean Flynn. The year is 1970, amidst the chaos of the Vietnam War. Sean Flynn, the dashing son of legendary actor Errol Flynn, had carved his own path as a daring photojournalist. Captivated by the thrill of capturing war's raw reality, Flynn, alongside fellow photographer Dana Stone, journeyed into the dangerous terrains of Cambodia. It was here on a fateful April day that their story took a dark turn. Ambushed by communist guerrillas, the two were captured and disappeared into the war's murky shadows. Despite extensive searches and the passage of decades, their fate remains an enduring, haunting mystery. Maura Murray On a cold February evening in 2004, Maura Murray, a bright 21-year-old nursing student, unexpectedly left her college in Massachusetts. After emailing her professors about a non-existent family emergency, she embarked on a mysterious journey. Her journey ended abruptly with a car crash on Route 112 in rural New Hampshire. When the police arrived, Mara was gone, leaving behind only her damaged car and a trail of unanswered questions. Despite numerous theories ranging from planned disappearance to foul play, Mora's fate remains one of the most perplexing modern mysteries today. Theodosia Burr Alston. Also guys, I'm totally probably pronouncing almost all of these wrong, and I'm so sorry. I am very white. <laughs> like, I swear, I eat hot dogs on a bun with just mayonnaise on it, like, and, and, and I like that as a, as a meal. <laughs> I'm really white, and I'm probably pronouncing all of these wrong. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> just so you know. But please, Put in the comments if like if I did pronounce one wrong and like how to pronounce it actually so I can be educated a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, picture the year 1812, a period rife with maritime perils. Theodosia Burr Alston, daughter of the controversial Aaron Burr, set sail aboard the Patriot, departing from South Carolina to New York. The Patriot, a vessel that had once been a privateer, embarked on what was supposed to be a routine journey. However, it never reached its destination. Lost to the vast, treacherous Atlantic, Theodosia's fate became the subject of legend and lore. With the most popular theory suggesting a grim encounter with pirates, a pretty common danger in those perilous times. Celine Delgado Lopez The tale of Celine Delgado Lopez is less about a physical disappearance and more about the emergence of a digital enigma. Her story begins with a social media profile that was seemingly unblockable and unremovable on Facebook, leading to the birth of numerous rumors and theories. Intriguingly, Celine was once featured in a segment called Al Servico a la Comunidad, which means community service, on Channel 5, which focused on finding missing or lost people. The mystery deepened when people noticed Celine on their friends list without any recollection of actually adding her. Theories ranged from hacking and ghost stories to speculations about her being a woman who disappeared years ago in Mexico. However, the person behind the profile eventually responded, dismissing all theories of her being missing or dead, insisting she was alive, well at home with her family, and called the whole situation a farce. Glenn Miller Glenn Miller, a renowned big band leader and University of Colorado Boulder alum, met a mysterious fate 
on December 15th, 1944. He was traveling over the English Channel to Paris in a small military plane when he disappeared. Since then, numerous conspiracy theories and speculations have emerged. Some of the more dramatic tales included him being assassinated, dying of a heart attack in Paris, or the plane being destroyed by bombs from Allied bombers. However, after extensive research, including visits to various archives, the most likely explanation seems to be that the plane went down over the channel due to fuel lines from wing tanks freezing. This caused the plane to disintegrate rapidly, leading to the instant deaths of Miller and the other two individuals on board. This explanation, although less melodramatic, is supported by documentation from an investigation at the time and aligns with the freezing conditions and the plane's defects. Joseph Force Crater The disappearance of Joseph Force Crater, a New York Supreme Court judge, in 1930 is a tale filled with elements of a classic crime novel. Crater vanished after leaving Billy Hayes's chop house, never to be seen again. His story involves elements of corrupt politics, dalliances with showgirls, and numerous alleged sightings. Prior to his disappearance, Crater had just been appointed to the court by then-Governor Franklin Roosevelt, amidst rumors of financial impropriety. The mystery deepened when it was discovered that Crater had destroyed documents and withdrawn a significant sum of money just before his disappearance. The night he was last seen, Crater dined with a friend in a showgirl, adding to the intrigue. Numerous theories about his whereabouts emerge, ranging from brothels to the possibilities of being buried under the New York Aquarium. The case took a dramatic turn in 2005 with the discovery of a note that brought new twists to the search for Crater. Springfield 3. The Springfield 3 refers to the baffling disappearance of friends Suzanne Susie Streeter and Stacy McCall, along with Streeter's mother, Cheryl Levitt, from Levitt's home in Springfield, Missouri on June 7, 1992. This case is particularly puzzling as all personal belongings, including cars and purses, were left behind, with only a broken porch light as a potential clue. The case took a bizarre turn when Robert Craig Cox, a convicted kidnapper and robber, claimed in 1997 that he knew the women had been murdered and that their bodies would never be found. However, no credible evidence or remains have been discovered and Cox's claims are not generally believed by investigators. A man called the America's Most Wanted hotline with crucial information but disconnected before being connected to Springfield investigators. The case remains unsolved with several theories but no concrete answers. Fosset Peru Boeing 727 Occupants on September 11th, 1990, a Fosset Peru Boeing 727, en route from Malta to Peru, disappeared over the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 180 miles southeast of Cape Race, Newfoundland, Canada. The last contact with the crew was a distress message stating that the aircraft had run out of fuel and they were preparing to ditch in the ocean. The plane, which was hundreds of miles off course, had six crew members and ten passengers on board all Peruvian nationals, including airline employees and their families. Despite search efforts, no trace of the aircraft or its occupants has been found, and the circumstances surrounding the disappearance remains a mystery. The Flannan Isles Lighthouse Keepers In December 1900, three lighthouse keepers, James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and Donald MacArthur, mysteriously vanished from the Flannan Isle Lighthouse off the coast of Scotland. The disappearance came to light when a passing ship noticed the lighthouse was not operational. Upon investigation, the relief crew found the entrance gate and main door closed, beds unmade, and the clock stopped. The lighthouse's log suggested routine operation until about December 15th, but no signs of the keepers were found. Evidence of severe weather damage at the west landing stage led to speculation that the keepers might have been swept away by waves while securing equipment. Despite various theories, including supernatural explanations, the fate of the Flannan Isle Lighthouse Keepers remains one of the most enduring maritime mysteries. Richie Edwards, a member of the band Manic Street Preachers, vanished on February 1st, 1995, on the day he and his bandmate were to fly to the United States for a promotional tour. In the two weeks before his disappearance, Edwards withdrew a significant sum of money from his bank account, the purpose of which remains unknown. The night before he disappeared, Edwards gave a friend a book about an author who stayed in a mental asylum before vanishing. He left behind a box of items for his ex-girlfriend, decorated with literary quotations. On the morning of his disappearance, Edwards checked out of his London hotel, leaving some personal items behind. His car was later found near the Servan Bridge, a known suicide site, but no conclusive evidence was found to determine his fate. There have been various alleged sightings of Edwards, including in India and on the Canary Islands, but none have been confirmed. Wolfgang Schellmann Wolfgang Schellmann was a German fighter pilot during World War II, known for his service with the Condor Legion during the Spanish Civil War and later commanding various fighter groups. He was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross for its achievements. However, on June 22, 1941, the first day of Operation Barbarossa, Schellmann was reported missing in action and presumed killed. The circumstances of his disappearance during this significant military operation remain unclear, contributing to the mystery surrounding his fate. 
Tammy Lynn Leppard. Tammy Lynn Leppard, an aspiring actress and model, disappeared under mysterious circumstances on July 6, 1983, in Cacao Beach, Florida. Before her disappearance, Leppard exhibited signs of paranoia and fear, which were particularly evident after attending a party and while working on the set of the film Scarface. She was last seen after an argument with a male friend who left her in a parking lot. Following her disappearance, there were unconfirmed phone calls from a woman claiming Leppard was alive and studying to become a nurse. There were suspicions around Christopher Wilde a serial killer active in Florida at the time, and John Crutchley, a convicted kidnapper and rapist. But neither was definitively linked to her case. Leppert's mother believed her daughter might have been murdered due to her knowledge of local drug trafficking. Peter Winston Peter Winston, a promising young chess player, vanished under puzzling circumstances in 1978. In late 1977, during a fide rated tournament at Hunter College High School in New York, Winston, despite being one of the highest rated players, lost all nine of his games. This was followed by more unexpected losses in subsequent games. On January 26, 1978, Winston disappeared, leaving his home without money, identification, or luggage during a severe winter storm. People close to Winston Winston noted that his mental health and chess performance had deteriorated in the last years of his life, which may have contributed to his disappearance. Nicholas B. Geich and Thomas Hale Boggs On October 16th, 1972, a twin-engine Cessna 310 plane carrying Rep. Hale Boggs, the House Majority Leader, and Rep. Nick B. Geich, along with an aide in the pilot, vanished in foul weather while en route between Anchorage and Juneau, Alaska. The disappearance of Boggs and B. Geich triggered the largest search and rescue operation in U.S. history at the time, involving 40 military aircrafts, 50 civilian planes, and over 3,600 hours of search time across a 325,000 square mile area. After 39 days, the search was caught off with no sign of the wreckage or survivors. This incident led to the mandating of emergency locator transmitters in all US civil aircraft. There have been various conspiracy theories regarding their disappearance, particularly surrounding Boggs' descent from the Warren Commission's report on President John F. Kennedy's assassination. So, kinda creepy. Solomon Northup Solomon Northup, the African-American writer best known for his memoir, Twelve Years a Slave, mysteriously disappeared sometime after 1857. The exact date, location, and circumstances of his disappearance remain unknown. Several theories have been proposed, including the possibility that he was kidnapped again and forced back into slavery, or that he died in an unknown location. Another theory suggests that Northup could have been captured and killed while serving as a spy for the Union Army during the Civil War, utilizing his knowledge of Louisiana and ability to blend in as a slave. Despite these theories, no concrete evidence has surfaced, and the details of his final years remain a mystery. Seabird and its crew The Seabird was a ship involved in a perplexing maritime mystery. After a voyage to Honduras, it was expected to arrive in Newport but was found abandoned in sight of land, with a longboat missing. Intriguingly, coffee was still boiling on the gallery stove, indicating a pretty sudden abandonment. The only living things found aboard were a dog and a cat. The circumstances surrounding the disappearance of the crew remain unexplained, and the ship later continues its voyages under a new name, Beachbird. James William Boyd James William Boyd was a Confederate military officer whose fate after the Civil War remains a mystery. Captured in 1863 and held as a prisoner of war, Boyd was released in 1865 to take care of his motherless children following the death of his wife. However, after his release, Boyd's whereabouts became unknown. His son received a letter to meet Boyd in Brownsville, Texas for a trip to Mexico, but Boyd never arrived to the rendezvous, and no further contact was ever received from him. This disappearance has led to various speculations and theories, but no definitive answers have been found. George Guynemer, a celebrated French fighter pilot during World War I, mysteriously disappeared on September 11, 1917. Known for his impressive aerial victories, Guy Niemer took off on a mission with the rookie pilot to patrol the Langemark area. During this mission, Guy Niemer spotted a German observation plane and pursued it. However, his wingman lost sight of him after encountering enemy aircraft and Guy Niemer never returned. His squadron commander officially confirmed him missing in action and later, a captured German pilot provided some information about his potential fate. A German sergeant from the 413th Regiment claimed to have witnessed Guy Niemer's crash and identified his body, noting that he had died from a bullet through the head. However, Allied artillery fire prevented the German
German recovery team from retrieving or burying the body, leaving the exact details of his death and the location of his remains unknown. Erna Peterman Erna Peterman was a high-ranking female overseer at Nazi concentration camps during World War II. After the liberation of the Grobwerther camp by the Allies, Peterman fled and went into hiding. Her subsequent whereabouts and post-war activities remain a mystery, with no records or sightings confirming her fate. This lack of information has also impeded efforts to question her about potential involvement in war crimes. The disappearance of Peterman adds to the numerous unsolved cases of individuals involved in the Nazi regime who vanished after the war leaving behind some unanswered questions about their roles and responsibilities during the Holocaust. Vincent Mangano Vincent Mangano was a prominent figure in the American Mafia and the head of what would become known as the Gambino crime family. Mangano's disappearance in 1951 marked a significant moment in organized crime history. He was seen leaving his Brooklyn home and was never heard from again. His body was never found and no one was ever charged with his disappearance. The circumstances surrounding his vanishing remain shrouded in mystery. Although there was speculation within the underworld that his underboss, Albert Anastasia, may have been responsible. Mangano's disappearance is one of the many unsolved cases in the history of organized crime, where silence and secrecy often overshadow the truth, leaving the public and law enforcement to speculate about the fates of those involved. Margaret Ellen Fox's case is a heart-wrenching one that dates back to June 24th, 1974. On that fateful day, she was supposed to meet a man named John Marshall concerning a babysitting job. She had advertised her services, and Marshall, who was to meet her in Mount Holly, had responded. Witnesses last saw Margaret near Mill and High Streets after she had reached Mount Holly. Disturbingly, after her disappearance, a man called demanding a $10,000 ransom for her safe return, although his identity remains a mystery. The investigation revealed that the phone number given to her by John Marshall was traced to a phone booth in Lumberton, suggesting an abduction. Over the years, there have been efforts to reevaluate the case, including releasing the ransom call audio on the FBI website in hopes of identifying the abductor. Despite these efforts and a $25,000 reward for the information leading to the arrest of her abductor, the case remains unsolved. Jim Sullivan Jim Sullivan's disappearance is as mysterious as it is intriguing, marked by a blend of mundane details and eerie circumstances. On March 4, 1970, he left Los Angeles for Nashville in his Volkswagen Beetle. That following day, after being cautioned for his driving, he checked into a hotel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico, but it's believed that he didn't actually stay there. The subsequent day, Sullivan was seen at a remote ranch. His abandoned car was later found there containing his belongings. His disappearance has sparked various theories, including murder, voluntary disappearance, or even alien abduction, particularly given the title of his first album, UFO. Despite extensive search efforts, no trace of Sullivan was found. Later, a decomposed body resembling him was discovered, but was not identified as Sullivan's. Fort Worth Trio On December 23, 1974, in Fort Worth, Texas, a mysterious event unfolded when three girls, Mary Rachel, Chalika, Lisa Renee Wilson, and Julie Ann Mosley, disappeared while Christmas shopping at the Seminary South Shopping Center. The girls' car was discovered in the mall's parking lot, but they were nowhere to be found. Rachel, age 17, was a married high school student with distinctive long brown hair, green eyes, and a noticeable chipped tooth. Lisa, 14, was recognized by her light, wavy brown hair and a unique scar on her thigh, while Julie, just nine years old, was the youngest with her sandy blonde hair and blue eyes. Their disappearance led to a widespread search, but despite various leads and intensive investigations, including a peculiar letter allegedly from Rachel, their fate remains unknown. Over the years, numerous efforts, such as analyzing cars from a lake and DNA testing, have been made to solve this perplexing case, but it continues to remain a baffling mystery. Helena Anderson In Mariestad, Sweden, the disappearance of a 22-year-old Helena Anderson on June 14, 1992 sparked a series of investigations and media attention. Helena vanished after a night at a nightclub, last seen walking home. Near her home, items belonging to her, including sandals and rings, were found along with blood traces. Witnesses reported seeing a white car nearby, and DNA tests identified traces of three individuals on her sandals. Despite arrests of several suspects, including a man in his 60s who owned a white car, no charges have been filed. The case, after years of investigation by a special cold case unit, was eventually closed in June 2022, with the decision to reopen it only if new evidence emerges. By the way guys, I hope you don't mind the, uh, the humor that I'm putting in these. I'm not trying to, like, discredit or, um, speak lightly about these serious topics, I just, I'm making a YouTube video about it, like, it's still, like, a very serious topic, right, but I'm trying to make it more digestible, I guess, and I don't mean to be disrespectful at all, and if I come across that way at all, I do apologize, and I will apologize, but I think I'm just, you know, trying to 
add in a little bit of lightheartedness when I need to because, you know, it's just a YouTube video. It's just a little YouTube video. Jacobo Grinberg. The disappearance of Jacobo Grinberg, a Mexican scientist known for his research into consciousness and telepathy, has been shrouded in mystery since December 1994. Greenberg, who had delved into studies of Mexican shamanism and meditation, vanished amidst a period of significant political and economic turmoil in Mexico. His sudden disappearance, initially not alarming due to his nature of spontaneous travels, has since been the subject of various theories, ranging from alien abduction to government agency involvement. Despite numerous speculations and an official investigation that was eventually closed, the truth behind Greenberg's disappearance remains an unsolved enigma, continuing to intrigue and confound. Agatha Christie Agatha Christie's mysterious disappearance in 1926 is one of the most intriguing events in literary history. On December 3rd, 1926, following a quarrel with her husband Archie, who had requested a divorce, Agatha left her house. The next morning, her car was found abandoned, partially hidden in bushes of Surrey. This incident happened after the death of her mother and amidst her husband's affair, contributing to her pretty distressed state. Ten days later, Agatha was found at the Hydropathic Hotel in Harrogate, Yorkshire, living under the pseudonym Theresa Neal. Her husband identified her in a dramatic scene reminiscent of her own novels. Agatha appeared confused and didn't recognize Archie, leading to speculation about amnesia and a possible concussion. The true reason behind her disappearance has been debated, with theories ranging from a nervous breakdown to a publicity stunt. Following this incident, Agatha and Archie divorced, and later she married archaeologist Sir Max Malowin. Agatha never publicly spoke about her disappearance, leaving it a lasting mystery. Shinichi Shimomura Shinichi Shimomura, a key figure at HAL Laboratory and a driving force behind the Kirby series, mysteriously vanished from the gaming industry without a trace. His colleagues at HAL Laboratory were left in the dark about his disappearance. Despite extensive searches, including obituary checks, no concrete information about his death or whereabouts has been found. Several theories exist about Shimomura's disappearance. One theory suggests he might have died shortly after working on Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland in 2002, but this remains inconclusive due to a lack of evidence. Another prevailing theory is that Shimomura retired from the gaming industry to live a life away from the limelight, possibly engaging in completely different activities. Michaela Bali Michaela Bali, a 16-year-old Canadian, disappeared from Yorkton, Saskatchewan on April 12, 2016. Last seen at a bus stop, her disappearance remains a mystery despite several reported sightings. Michaela, a shy and quiet girl, was in the 11th grade and enjoyed playing the violin and participating in drama club. She was known for her caring nature and she had no history of disappearing. She's 157 centimeters tall, weighs 56 kilograms, and has distinctive features like acne, a birthmark on her chin, and scars from chickenpox and self-harm. On the day she vanished, a detailed timeline of her movements was reconstructed using surveillance footage and witness statements. She was seen at various locations, including a pawn shop, a bank, and a Tim Horton slash Wendy's. And it's pretty easy to say that this actually was her because of all those distinctive marks that I mentioned. Michaela's phone was turned off the next morning and she hadn't used her social media accounts since. Despite extensive investigations, no conclusive evidence has been found. Her family and police received multiple tips, including reported sightings in various locations, but none of them have led to her discovery. The family organized fundraising events to offer rewards for information leading to Michaela's safe return, but still nothing. Kayla Berg Kayla Berg, 15, was last seen on August 11, 2009 in Antigua, Wisconsin. She was picked up by Kyle Kioszewski, a friend of her brother, and went to McDonald's in Antigua. Kyle claimed he dropped her off at a house she said belonged to her boyfriend around 10 p.m., and she hasn't been heard from since. The investigation revealed that the house where she was supposed to be dropped off was condemned, raising questions about her actual whereabouts. Kayla didn't have a cell phone with GPS tracking, leading to a delay in reporting her disappearance. She's described as a Caucasian female with brown eyes and brown hair, about 5'2", and weighing 108 pounds. So yeah, if you see her, uh, say something. All right, that was layer two. Let's get into layer three. Joanna Lopez. Joanna Lopez's disappearance remains one of the most perplexing unsolved cases from Chicago in the 1980s. On January 14th, 1989, a low-quality black-and-white picture of Joanna was broadcasted on Chicago TV, leaving viewers with little to no information about her. The photograph, shown again in 1991 during a TV sign-off, lacked any accompanying details such as age, height, or appearance, except for a Chicago Police Department phone number. The mystery deepened as internet users and cold case hunters speculated about the entire family's disappearance and Joanna not being an actual person. Extensive searches revealed that Joanna wasn't listed on missing person databases, and links to a Jane Doe discovered in 1994 with timelines matching Joanna's case remain unconfirmed. 
Natalie Holloway. Natalie Holloway's disappearance in Aruba on May 30th, 2005 became a high-profile case that captured international attention. An 18-year-old high school senior from Mountain Brook, Alabama, Holloway vanished while on a graduation trip. She was last seen getting into a car with Joran van der Sloot and the Kalpo brothers after leaving a nightclub. Despite extensive searches involving the FBI, Dutch soldiers, and specialized aircraft, Holloway was never found. The prime suspect, Joran van der Sloot, made conflicting statements about his involvement and was later convicted of another murder in Peru. The case was officially closed without charges in 2007, but was briefly reopened in 2008 after new evidence emerged. Van der Sloot was extradited to the US in 2023 and pleaded guilty to extortion and confessed to killing Holloway. Guerrero and Torres. The Aguilar de Campu case involves the unsolved disappearance of Virginia Guerrero, 14, and Manuela Torres, 13, on April 23rd, 1992. They were last seen hitchhiking from Reynosa, Cantabria to their hometown of, oh my god, these words, bro. <laughs> Aguilar de Campu, Palencia. The evening they vanished, they visited a nightclub in Reynosa and decided to hitchhike home. A witness saw them getting into a white car in Reynosa, which was the last confirmed sighting. Despite leads in Spain and France, the case remains unsolved. In 1994, human bones found near the Rake Jada Dam and two skulls discovered in 2001 were investigated but were unrelated to the girls, belonging to victims of the Spanish Civil War. Reza Reisinen. Reza Reisinen, a 16-year-old Finnish girl, disappeared in Tampere, Finland, on October 16th, 1999. Her disappearance is considered the most infamous in Finnish history. On the night of her disappearance, Raisinen was out celebrating with a friend and had intended to join her boyfriend at a house party. After visiting a restaurant in the city center, Raisinen was left alone as her friend left for another party. The last confirmed sighting of Raisinen was around 2250, near the Soko's department store in central Tampere. Witnesses reported seeing her with an older, heavy-built woman, after which they heard two loud screams. The case, initially considered manslaughter, is now investigated as a homicide under Finnish law, where murder never expires under the statute of limitations. Gill family. The Gill family, consisting of six members, mysteriously disappeared on January 13th, 2002, in Entre Rios province, Argentina. Ruben Gill, his wife Margarita, and their children lived on the La Candelaria Estancia, where they worked as landlords. The family was last seen visiting a friend named Maxico Vega in a nearby town on January 12th, 2002. In April, the Estancia owner informed relatives that the Gills hadn't returned from a supposed three-month vacation. The investigation revealed calls made from Ruben's cell phone to an untraceable woman in Rosario. Despite investigations in Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil exploring possibilities like forced disappearance, no conclusive leads were actually found. The family hasn't appeared in any registry, and in 2008, a raid on the Instancia found human blood samples unrelated to the gills. Weldon Keys. Weldon Keys, an American poet, disappeared on July 18, 1955. The night before, he returned home in San Francisco's Marina District and made plans to meet friends. However, his subsequent actions remained a mystery. On July 19th, his car was found abandoned near the Golden Gate Bridge in Marion County, sparking speculation about his fate. The disappearance of Keyes, known for his artistic talents and troubled mind, has become a subject of enduring mystery and speculation about whether he took his own life or started anew elsewhere. Bison Deal Bison Deal, a former professional basketball player, his girlfriend Serena Carlin, and skipper Bertrand Saldo, embarked on a sailing trip on Deal's catamaran Hakuna Matsada from Tahiti on July 6, 2002. The last communication from the voyage was on July 8th. Deal's brother, Miles DeBoard, was the only one seen after the trip when he brought the boat back to Tahiti on July 20th, alone. In September, DeBoard was detained in a sting operation for forging Deal's signature and using his passport. The Hakuna Matata was later found with his nameplate removed and patched bullet holes. The FBI and French authorities suspected that DeBoard murdered Deal, Carlin, and Saldo and threw their bodies overboard, weighed down in the Pacific Ocean. Abraham Gangwatch, a controversial figure during World War II, led a lavish life in the Warsaw Ghetto as a collaborator with Nazi forces. He established Group 13, involved in smuggling and racketeering, and led the Zegu organization, sponsored by the Gestapo. After most of Group 13 was eliminated by the Germans in 1943, Gangwatch reappeared on the Aryan side of Warsaw, hunting for Poles aiding Jews. Despite being sentenced to death by the Jewish combat organization, he was never executed, and his ultimate fate remains unknown, adding to the mystery surrounding his controversial life. 
Romulus. Romulus, a figure shrouded in myth and legend, is famously known as one of the twin founders of Rome, along with his brother Remus. According to Roman mythology, Romulus mysteriously disappeared in 717 BCE. His story is more of a blend of myth and history, making it difficult to separate fact from fiction. The tale goes that during a meeting with senators, a sudden storm or a whirlwind enveloped Romulus and he was never seen again. Some actions suggest he was murdered by the senators, while others claim he was taken up to the heavens, becoming a god. His disappearance marks the end of Rome's foundation myth and the beginning of his history as a city. Romulus' story, wrapped in the mists of time, is a fascinating blend of history and legend, illustrating how the two can intertwine to create enduring narratives. Joseph Pickler Joseph Pickler, born on February 14th, 1987, was a promising young actor best known for his role in the Beethoven movie series. His life took an unexpected turn when he mysteriously vanished in January 2006 from Bremerton, Washington. Just 18 at the time, Joseph's disappearance left many unanswered questions. Before his disappearance, Joseph was transitioning from child actor to adult roles, a phase that can be challenging and stressful. On the evening of January 4th, 2006, he was seen playing cards with friends. He seemed in good spirits, but this was the last time anyone ever reported seeing him. His car was later found abandoned during the Port Madison Narrows Bridge, a place known for its serene yet somber beauty. Inside the car were Joseph's wallet and a note that someone interpreted as a goodbye message, leading to speculation about his state of mind. Despite extensive searches, no conclusive evidence was found to determine what happened to Joseph. His family and friends have been left to wonder and hope, clinging to the possibility that he might still be out there. Oscar Zita Acosta Oscar Zita Acosta, born on April 8th, 1935 was a man of many facets, an attorney, a politician, and an author. Most famously known for his friendship with Hunter S. Thompson and his portrayal as Dr. Gonzo in Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Los Angeles. His life was as colorful and turbulent as the era he lived in, the 1960s and 70s, a time of radical change and intense social movements. Acosta was deeply involved in Chicano civil rights activism, a fiery and passionate advocate for justice. However, his life was also marked by excess, and his consumption of drugs and alcohol and his larger-than-life personality. In May 1974, Oscar Zita Acosta disappeared during a trip to Mazatlan, Mexico, under circumstances as mysterious and wild as his life had been. There are numerous theories about what happened to him. Some believe he met with foul play at the hands of drug dealers or political enemies. Others speculate that he went into hiding, perhaps wary of his tumultuous life, but no solid evidence has ever surfaced to confirm any of these theories. Like a character in one of his own stories, Oscar Zita Acosta faded into legend, his disappearance an unsolved enigma wrapped in the myths and realities of a turbulent time. Ashley Summers Ashley Summers was a young girl from Cleveland, Ohio, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Born on June 16th, 1993, she was just 14 years old when she vanished in July 2007. Her story is particularly poignant and unsettling given the context of her disappearance. Ashley was reported to have had an argument with her family before she went missing, a not uncommon scenario for teenagers. Initially, it was thought that she might have run away, however, as time passed without any contact, concerns grew. Adding to the mystery was the fact that Ashley disappeared from the same area where Amanda Berry and Gina de Jesus had gone missing in previous years, leading to fears that her case might be connected to a larger pattern of abductions. In 2009, a ray of hope appeared when a photo of a girl resembling Ashley with shorter hair surfaced, but it failed to lead to her whereabouts. The FBI has continued to investigate her disappearance, treating it as a possible abduction. Erin Marie Gilbert Aaron Erin Marie Gilbert's disappearance is a baffling case as puzzled investigators for years. Born on November 21st, 1974, Erin was 24 years old when she vanished on July 1st, 1997, in Gurwood, Alaska. Her disappearance occurred during a visit to the Gurwood Forest Fair, a popular annual event. What makes Erin's case particularly perplexing is any lack of clear evidence or leads. She was last seen walking with a man that she had recently met, but this individual was cleared of any involvement after a police investigation. The fair, with its bustling crowds and festive environment, seemed like an unlikely place for someone to vanish without a trace. Despite extensive searches in the surrounding areas and ongoing investigations, no concrete clues been found to explain her sudden disappearance. Ambrose Bierce Ambrose Bierce, an American literary figure known for his sardonic wit and macabre stories, vanished under mysterious circumstances that seem almost fitting for a character in one of his tales. Born on June 24th, 1842, Bierce had a varied career as a 
journalist, writer, and veteran of the American Civil War. In late 1913, at the age of 71, he traveled to Mexico, which was in the throes of revolutionary turmoil. Bierce's last known communication was a letter sent to a friend in December 1913, after which he disappeared without a trace. His fate has been the subject of much speculation. Some believe he was killed in the midst of the Mexican Revolution, possibly at the Battle of Orangina. <laughs> like, I mispronounced that so bad. Wait, hold on. Ojinaga. I don't know what I just said. Others speculate he committed suicide or even faked his death to start a new life. However, no definitive evidence has been found. The Crew of Hermania. The disappearance of the crew of the Hermania is a maritime mystery that echoes the tales of the Bermuda Triangle. The Hermania was a vessel that set sail under circumstances that are not thoroughly documented, adding to the enigma surrounding his fate. Maritime history is replete with stories of ships vanishing without a trace, often attributed to the harsh and unpredictable nature of the sea. The case of the Hermania fits this eerie narrative. The ship and its crew simply vanished, with no distress signals or wreckage ever found. The ocean, vast and inscrutable, has a way of swallowing secrets, leaving behind nothing but questions and ghost stories. The fate of the Hermania and her crew remains one of the sea's many unsolved mysteries, which, by the way guys, I might do an ocean mysteries iceberg soon, so be on the lookout for that. Laozi. Laozi, also known as Lao Tzu, is a legendary figure in Chinese culture, often considered the founder of Taoism and the author of the Tao Te Ching. His existence is shrouded in mystery, with some historians questioning whether he was a real person or a mythical figure just made up. Traditional accounts date his life to the 6th century BCE in ancient China. The story of Laozi's end is as enigmatic as his life was. It's said that he grew weary of the moral decay in the city and decided to travel west. At the border, he was recognized by a guard who requested him to write down his teachings, resulting in the creation of the Tao Te Ching. After this, Laozi supposedly vanished, his ultimate fate unknown, contributing to his mystical legacy. Archibald S. Dobbins A Confederate officer in the American Civil War, Dobbins commanded a cavalry in the Strand's Mississippi Theater. His military career, however, faced turmoil. After the infamous Marmaduke-Walker duel, Dobbins refused to serve under General Marmaduke, leading to his court-martial for insubordination. Post-Civil War, Dobbins ventured into the mercantile business in New Orleans. Seeking new opportunities, he relocated to the Para region of Brazil in 1867, along with a brother. Two years later, he beckoned his family to join him. However, as his wife Mary prepared for the journey, correspondence from Dobbins ceased abruptly. In 1878, records indicate a shift in Dobbins' whereabouts to Patagonia, Argentina, where he engaged in business endeavors. He became involved with a group of Scottish colonists from Greenock, arranging their passage to Port Desire, Argentina as documented in an 1881 article from The Standard, a Buenos Aires newspaper. The mystery deepens around his fate. Theories range widely. Some speculate he may have met a violent end at the hands of local indigenous tribes. Others ponder the possibility of a natural death in the remote Patagonian wilderness. A more personal theory suggests a deliberate choice to abandon his family. Frederick MacDonald. Frederick MacDonald was an Australian politician who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Born in 1872, he was elected to the Australian House of Representatives for the Labour Party in 1910. In 1913, MacDonald accused a fellow politician, William Holman, of bribery, leading to a pretty heated dispute. Shortly after this, in April 1913, MacDonald disappeared without a trace. His disappearance remains unsolved, with various theories but no concrete evidence. His case is noted in Australian political history due to the unusual circumstances of his vanishing and, you know, the whole, like, public controversy. Evelyn Hartley Evelyn Hartley was a 15-year-old high school student who disappeared on October 24th, 1953 in La Crosse, Wisconsin, USA. She vanished while babysitting. When Evelyn's father went to check on her during the evening, he found the front door of the house unlocked, the baby unharmed, but no sign of Evelyn. Evidence indicates that a struggle had taken place. Her glasses and shoes were found in the house, and there were bloodstains outside. Despite extensive searches and investigations, no trace of Evelyn was ever found. Her disappearance remains one of the most haunting unsolved cases in Wisconsin's history. Charles Rogers Charles Frederick Rogers, born on December 30th, 1921, was a seismologist and pilot who mysteriously vanished in 1965 under chilling circumstances. His story takes a dark turn when on June 23rd, 1965, Houston police discovered the dismembered bodies of Fred and Edwina Rogers, Charles's 
Charles's elderly parents in their refrigerator. Shockingly, Charles, the primary suspect, was nowhere to be found. The house showed no signs of struggle, and Charles's car was found abandoned at a nearby location. Despite being a suspect, some believe Charles was not capable of such a brutal act, citing his quiet, studious nature. He had served in the Navy during World War II and later worked in electronics and seismology. The case took on a life of his own, with theories ranging from Charles fleeing to Mexico or Honduras to being killed himself. However, no conclusive evidence of his fate has ever been discovered, and the case remains one of the most macabre and perplexing mysteries in Houston's history. Helen Voorhees Brache, born on November 10th, 1911, was an affluent widow of the Brache's candy company founder. She disappeared in February 1977 after a routine medical checkup at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. That's the coolest name for any clinic I've ever heard in my life. Um, please, I want to go to the Mayo Clinic <laughs> now. <laughs> Anyways, her case quickly spiraled into a complex web of deceit, crime, and possible murder. Helen was last seen alive at the clinic, but her disappearance wasn't reported until days later, as her employees believed she was on an extended vacation. Investigations revealed troubling connections to the criminal world, particularly within the horse show industry, where she was an enthusiastic participant. Helen was declared legally dead in 1984, and the case took many twists involving fraudulent activities and suspects with ties to organized crime. Despite extensive investigations, no one was directly charged with her disappearance. The case of Helen Braish is a blend of high society crime and mystery, with her ultimate fate still unknown. Christy Farney Christy Lynn Farney, born in 1968, was only six years old when she tragically disappeared on December 14th, 1978, from Medford, Oregon. Her disappearance came amidst a tumultuous family life marked by allegations of abuse and custody battles. Christy was last seen walking to her school, but she never arrived. Her life prior to her disappearance was troubled. She had been placed in foster care due to concerns about her safety at home. The investigation into her disappearance revealed a few leads and no evidence of what happened to her after she left her school that day. Over the years, there have been multiple attempts to locate her, including searches and age-progressed images, but none have brought closure to her case. Christy Farney's disappearance remains a heart-wrenching example of a child lost too soon, leaving a void filled with unanswered questions and a community's sorrow. Derek Ingbretson Derek James Ingbretson, born on March 2, 1991, was only eight years old when he vanished on December 5, 1998, in the wintry, dense woods of Oregon's Winnema National Forest. He was on a family trip to find a Christmas tree when he got separated from his father and grandfather. The search for Derek was extensive, involving multiple agencies and volunteers tears, but hampered by severe weather conditions. Footprints and a small handprint on a truck's window were the only clues found, and they led nowhere. As days turned into weeks, hope of finding Derek alive dwindled. His disappearance remains a haunting mystery. Over the years, there have been theories and suspects, but no concrete evidence or leads have brought closure to his family. Derek's story is a tragic reminder of how quickly a routine family outing can turn into a lifelong nightmare. Angelo Boeing 727 Occupants On May 25th, 2003, a Boeing 727 aircraft mysteriously disappeared from Cuatro de Feveiro Airport in Luanda, Angola. This bizarre incident became a global mystery, not just because a large airplane vanished, but also due to the unclear number and identity of the occupants aboard at the time of its disappearance. The aircraft was last seen being piloted by an American flight engineer, Ben Charles Padilla. Padilla and a Congolese mechanic, Jean-Michel Mutantu were reportedly the only two people aboard. However, their exact roles and intentions remain a subject of speculation. The plane took off without clearance or communication, heading over the Atlantic Ocean, and was never seen again. Investigations have explored various theories, from illegal activity to a desperate attempt to escape personal troubles. But the fate of the aircraft and its occupants remains one of aviation's greatest mysteries. Gilbert Winter Gilbert Winter, a London-based figure linked to the criminal underworld, disappeared in March 1998 under circumstances that hint at a crime related vanishing. Winter, associated with the notorious Adams Family Crime Syndicate, was known in the underground world for his role as an enforcer. His disappearance is believed to be connected to the violent and secretive operations of organized crime in London. The timing of Winter's disappearance coincided with a period of intense rivalry and retribution within the criminal factions he was associated with. Some theories suggest he was eliminated by rival gang members. Others speculate internal betrayal within his own group. Despite various leads and theories, the police investigation into his disappearance has yielded little public
public information, and no trace of Winter has been found. His case remains emblematic of the dangerous and often hidden world of organized crime. Don Lewis Don Lewis, born Jack Donald Lewis, was a millionaire and animal sanctuary owner who vanished on August 18th, 1997. His disappearance gained renewed public interest due to the Netflix documentary Tiger King, which highlighted his marriage to Carole Baskin, a big cat enthusiast and activist. Lewis's disappearance followed a series of events that raised suspicions, including reports of his intention to move some of his animal sanctuary operations to Costa Rica. He was last seen leaving his property in Tampa, Florida, but what transpired afterward remains unknown. His van was found at a nearby airport, yet there were no records of him taking a flight. The investigation into his disappearance has been fraught with speculation, including theories of foul play and suggestions that he started a new life elsewhere. Despite various leads and intense media scrutiny, the mystery surrounding Don Lewis's fate continues, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and intrigue. Roald Amundsen Roald Amundsen, a renowned Norwegian explorer known for his polar expeditions, disappeared on June 18, 1928. Born on July 16, 1872, Amundsen's life was a testament to his passion for exploration. He was the first person to ever reach the South Pole in 1911, among other significant achievements in polar exploration. Amundsen's final expedition was a rescue mission in the Arctic. He set out to find the missing Italian explorer Umberto Nobile, whose airship had crashed while returning from the North Pole. Amundsen and his team departed from the French Latham 47 flying boat, but they never returned, vanishing without a trace over the Barents Sea. Despite extensive search efforts, no wreckage or remains were ever found, and the exact fate of Amundsen and his crew remains one of the great mysteries of polar expedition. His disappearance marked the end of an era of heroic exploration and left a legacy that continues to inspire adventurers and explorers around the world. Lars Metenk Lars Metenk's disappearance is a puzzling case that has captured the attention of internet sleuths and mystery enthusiasts worldwide. In July 2014, Lars, a young German tourist, vanished in Varna, Bulgaria under highly unusual circumstances. The events leading to his disappearance are unsettling. Lars had been vacationing with friends when he was involved in a fight, suffering a minor ear injury. A local doctor advised him not to fly back with his friends due to the injury, leading him to stay behind in Bulgaria. Surveillance footage from the Varna airport shows Lars entering the airport with his luggage, then suddenly running out without his belongings, climbing a fence, and then disappearing into the surrounding forest. His erratic behavior and the abrupt nature of his disappearance have led to numerous theories, like mental disorientation due to his injury, fear of being pursued, or a drug-related incident. Despite extensive searches and widespread media coverage, no trace of Lars has been found. Joseph Andrews Joseph Andrews, an actor and independent filmmaker known for his roles in films like Detroit Rock City and Cabin Fever, reportedly disappeared under unclear circumstances. Details about his disappearance are sparse, and much of the information comes from anecdotal sources or unverified reports. Andrews gained a cult following for his unique and unconventional filmmaking style, often creating low-budget avant-garde films with a DIY ethos. Information regarding his disappearance is not widely documented, and it remains unclear what exactly happened to him. The lack of concrete information and the nature of his underground filmmaking community have contributed to the mystery surrounding his current whereabouts. In the absence of verified details, Joseph Andrews' case remains more of an enigma, shrouded in the kind of obscurity that often surrounds underground artists. That was Layer 3. Now for Layer 4, fellow YouTuber Snook is going to tell you about these people. 3, 2, 1... Hey, what's up guys? I'm Snook, and thank you for Poi for bringing me out, and I make iceberg videos as well on my channel, and uh, let's just get into this tier. Starting off with Todd Seas. The disappearance and eventual death of 39-year-old Todd Seas has been one of the most mysterious cases in modern UFOlogy. In the early morning of August 4th, 2002, Todd Jeffrey Seas rode his ATV, starting at his home at the base of Montour Ridge in North Cumberland County, PA, Point Township, on a short jaunt up a mountain trail adjacent to a sprawling high power line. After he failed to return home by noon, the family became concerned and notified the authorities. A massive search effort ensued, which included search and rescue personnel with search dogs and helicopters included, local and state police, as well as an organized search team that numbered 200 plus volunteers. The entire area from the top of the ridge, adjacent woods, and the family property was explored, including a small pond located 70 feet from the sea's house. Divers and dogs searched the area and around the pond without any success. The effort continued for approximately 36 hours until the second morning of the search. A family member noticed something in the bushes around the aforementioned pond. Todd's sea's body had been discovered in an area that was heavily searched the previous day 
and since that time, there has been very little information released to the public. The death was ruled as a fatal cocaine toxicity, despite evidence suggesting that something else most likely occurred, the circumstances involving the recovery, handling, autopsy, and final arrangements with the body are also mired in controversy. A joint investigation by Butch Witowski, Cold Case Unit of the UFO Research Center of PA, and the Phantoms and Monsters Fortane research team has uncovered previously undisclosed information in regard to the incident, but still a lot is unknown and not released to the public. Licorice McKenzie McKenzie was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, after reading her poetry at folk clubs in Edinburgh. She met the musician Robin Williamson, but left home in her teens with the intention of marrying Bert Janscht. The fans were published, but then her wedding never took place. Janch left her behind to travel to Morocco in 1963, and, according to Williamson, she fell into my arms. In 1966, she traveled to Morocco with Williamson, and was later involved in the Incredible String Band's recording. Her first contribution to the band came in the form of backing vocals on the track Painting Box on the 1967 album The 5,000 Spirits or The Layers of the Onion. By 1968, she was regarded as a fully-fledged member of the band, usually as a backing singer and percussionist, and as she performed with them at the Woodstock Festival in August 1969, by 1972, she had left the band. After her relationship with Williamson ended, in 1974, Mackenzie appeared on stage at Scientology Benefit Concert in East Grinstead with Mike Garrison, Woody Woods Mancy, Leonard Howell, and others, before moving to California and joining the Silver Moon Band. She married the musician Brian Lambert. They later divorced. She appeared with Williamson and his Mary Band in 1977 and is credited as Licky Lambert on the 1977 album Journey's End before joining Woody Woodmancy Band U Boat. Although, where she kind of goes missing in the whole missing persons thing was she visited Edinburgh in 1986 to see her family, but her whereabouts have been unknown since 1990 when, according to her sister, she was in Sacramento, California, apparently recovering from surgery. The music journalist Mark Ellen wrote in Mojo Magazine in 2000 that she was last seen in 1987 hitchhiking across the Arizona desert. Not even her family has heard or seen anything from her since. Fellow former Incredible String Band member Rose Simpson was quoted as saying, there's a possibility she may be dead. Adam, Trevor, and Mitchell O'Brien are missing brothers from Torbay, Newfoundland and Labour, Canada, who were allegedly abducted by their father, Gary O'Brien, on November 9, 1996. Their suspected kidnapping made both national and international headlines. Gary O'Brien is wanted by Interpol for their abduction, although various tips have come in from both Canada and the United States and a $50,000 reward has been offered. Police have never been able to locate the O'Brien brothers or their father. On November 9, 1996, Adam, Trevor, and Mitchell, aged 14, 11, and 4, went to visit their father and non-custodial parent, Gary O'Brien, at his home in Torbay, Newfoundland, Canada. At 8.30 p.m. that night, Gary called Deanna Boldlin, his ex-wife and the boy's mother and custodial parent, and told her that he was not going to return with the boys to her and had wrecked his house so that it would explode if anyone entered it. When Boland asked to speak to the boys, Gary told her later and hung up. Boland's sister, who was with Boland at the time, immediately called the police. When police first arrived at the house, they discovered that O'Brien had set up a makeshift bomb using two 400-pound propane tanks that would explode and destroy both his home and the surrounding houses if anyone had tried to go inside. Boland believes that this was done in order to create a diversion. O'Brien had a history of violence, as were tendencies, and psychiatric problems, and is described by Boland as introverted and resourceful. In October 1997, almost a year after the disappearance, an engine assembly for a 1989 Ford Tempo, which may have been from O'Brien's vehicle, was discovered in the ocean near Flat Rock, approximately 10 kilometers from where the boys disappeared. No bodies were recovered from the location. Boland suspected that O'Brien dumped the engine of his car over the cliffs and into the ocean in order to deliberately mislead police. The following year, police in Thunder Bay received an anonymous tip from a woman who stated that she'd recognized pictures of the brothers. The woman said that she'd babysat for them and knew the nicknames of one of the boys. Police attempted to locate the woman near 1999 but were unsuccessful. Although O'Brien's sister suspected that her brother and her nephews are dead, Boland firmly believes that her sons are still alive stating that O'Brien may have taken them to religious commune and reared them in an environment with no access to technology or the outside world. She believes that being cut off from the outside world may have allowed O'Brien to brainwash Adam, Trevor, and Mitchell, which could be why they have never tried to contact her. 
In order to aid the search for the Oprian brothers, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has created multiple age-progressed photos of the boys over the past two decades, with the most recent ones having been released in early 2017, and as of 2023, their case remains open. John Favara, the backyard neighbor of Gambino crime family boss John Gotti, disappeared on July 28, 1980, after accidentally killing Gotti's son in a car accident. Despite being ruled an accident, Favara faced threats and attack from Gotti's wife, who was abducted and witnesses reported various brutalities. The FBI investigated it, but Favara's body was never found. His family moved, and he was declared legally dead in 1983. Allegations suggested mob hitman Charles Cardinale killed and disposed of Favreau's body in acid. Those suspected denied involvement and showed no remorse, stating he wouldn't be sorry if Favreau turned up dead. The case remains a haunting episode in organized crime history. George Mallory George Mallory was a British mountaineer and explorer, best known for his attempts to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Born on June 18, 1886 in Marlborough, Shirshire, England, Mallory developed a passion for climbing at an early age. Mallory participated in the first three British expeditions to Mount Everest in the early 1920s. His first attempt was in 1921, followed by the second in 1922, and finally, the ill-fated expedition of 1924. It was during the first 1924 expedition that Mallory and his climbing partner, Andrew Sandy Irvine, disappeared on the mountain. Mallory's fate remained a mystery for many, many years until his body was discovered on Everest in 1999 by an expedition led by American climber Conrad Anker. The circumstances of Mallory and Irvine's disappearance, as well as the question of whether they successfully reached the summit before perishing, have been the subject of much speculation and debate among mountaineers and historians. Mallory is often remembered for his famous response to the question of why he wanted to climb Mount Everest, quote, because it's there. This simple yet profound statement captures the spirit of exploration and adventure that drove Mallory and continues to inspire mountaineers to this day, even though of his disappearance for so many years. Mente Inferma The case of Sebastian Alvarez is a complex and mysterious one with several theories surrounding his disappearance. Some key points and theories include Sebastian, also known as Mente Inferma, was a Chilean internet celebrity known for his controversial views and activities, including a blog that criticized and rated obese women. He had a troubled relationship with his family and his boyfriend, Mikhail Rowe. Sebastian disappeared in 2017, leaving a message to his sister suggesting S-word intentions. Michael posted on social media about their move to Corquino, Chile, to help Sebastian break his cocaine addiction. Strange events occurred after Sebastian's disappearance, including activity on his social media accounts and the release of mysterious audio titled hashtag E-E-T-T-D-D-C-C on his SoundCloud. The audio contained messages in German and English, Morse code, and spectrographic pictures. It referred to an ARG, or otherwise known as alternate reality game, called The Treasure of Kirkano. Investigators discovered a video on the deep web allegedly recorded after Sebastian's disappearance. It showed someone in the woods with a flashlight and a barking dog, and theories surrounding Sebastian's disappearance include S-Word with the audio preset for release. Suspicions of murder involving Michael and the possibility of Sebastian still being alive, orchestrating an elaborate ARG, and the fate of Sebastian Alvarez remains uncertain and various different theories persist, but no one knows for sure. The case involves a mix of real-life events, online mysteries, and unanswered question, leaving room for speculation and intrigue to this day. Kenny Veach Ken A. Veach was an American hiker and explorer known for his disappearance in the Nevada desert, particularly in the Sheep Mountains near Nellis Air Force Base. Veach gained attention through his YouTube channel and forum posts where he shared his experiences with the stage cave he called the M Cave or the Mystery Cave. He claimed to have felt an unusual energy in the area and expressed his desire to explore the cave further. In October 2014, Kenny Veach set out alone to locate the M Cave. He was equipped with a video camera to document his journey, but unfortunately, he did not return. In a subsequent search by authorities and volunteers, failed to locate him or anywhere to see where he had gone. The mystery of Kenny Veach's disappearance, coupled with his fascination with the paranormal and the unexplained, has led to different theories and speculations. And as of today, no one really knows, but he's a very big guy on the internet, and people think it may have been some sort of just lost out in the desert and slowly died by dehydration or starvation or a possible S-word attempt. Wallace D. Fard 
Wallace D. Fard, also known as Wallace Fard Muhammad, was the founder of the Nation of Islam, otherwise known as the NOI, a religious and political movement that emerged in the United States in the early 20th century. Fard's life is shrouded in mystery, and many details remain unclear or disputed. Fard arrived in Detroit, Michigan in the 1930s and began teaching a unique form of Islam to African Americans, emphasizing black empowerment, self-reliance, and separation from white society. He attracted followers and established the first Temple of Islam in Detroit. Fard's teaching, often referred to as Fardinism, included the belief in the existence of Allah as a black man and that the original people of the earth were black. He introduced a set of moral and dietary rules, including the avoidance of pork and the promotion of a healthy lifestyle. In 1934, Far disappeared under mysterious circumstances, and his departure from the public eye gave rise to various speculations about his identity and the reasons for his disappearance. Some believe he returned to Mecca, while others suggested he faced legal charges and went into hiding. After Fard's disappearance, Elijah Muhammad assumed the leadership of the Nation of Islam and expanded into influence. The NOI continued to promote black nationalism, self-sufficiency, and separism. Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali were among the prominent figures associated with the Nation of Islam during its peak. Despite the uncertainties surrounding the Fard's life and disappearance, his role as the founder of the Nation of Islam had a lasting impact on the development of black religious and political movements in the United States, but still, no one knows what happened to him. Luigi Barbesino Luigi Barbesino was an Italian footballer and manager born on May 1, 1894 in Casal Monferno, Piedmont. He was a midfielder, spent his entire career playing at his hometown club, Casal. Barbesino played for Casal from 1912 to 1920, contributing to his team's victory in the Italian football championship during his tenure. His international career included representing Italy at the 1912 Summer Olympics, making his debut on July 1, 1912 in a 1-0 away win over Sweden. Barbesino is officially recognized as the fourth youngest international player to appear for Italy. In total, he earned five international caps between 1912 and 1914, scoring once again in a friendly against Switzerland on May 17, 1914. After his career, Barbesino transitioned into coaching and served as a manager of Roma from 1934 to 1938. He was known for his strong support of fascism and actively participated in the fascist march on Valdezno on October 1 through the 2nd, which preceded the march on Rome. When World War II broke out, Barbesino left football to serve as a major observer in the Regina Ardionacchia. He left in Sovia Marchetti SM.79 Tremors as part of the 194 Squadra Regilo Bombardimento Terrese, or the 193rd Bomb Squadron, based at Scrita Airfield in Sicily. Unfortunately, on April 20th, 1941, during a mission on the Scalia, Corita Carata Scurrida Route, Barbesino's aircraft disappeared. His wingman turned back due to bad weather, but Barbesino's plane was never heard from again and never found. As of the last available information, he and the entire crew of six are still officially listed as missing. Tyrone Power Tyrone Power was a distinguished American film actor born on May 5, 1914 in Cincinnati, Ohio, into a family with a strong tradition in acting. Initially making a mark on the stage, Power transitioned to Hollywood and quickly became one of the most popular and handsome leading men of the 1930s and 1940s, not my words, theirs. His versatile acting skills allowed him to excel in a variety of genres, from romantic dramas like Blood and Sand to swashbuckling adventures such as The Mark of Zorro, and serious dramas like The Razor's Edge. During World War II, Power served in the United States Marine Corps as a pilot, contributing to his already heroic image. His military service added another layer to his public persona and made him more popular, and he remained in the reserves after the war. Throughout his life, Power had three marriages, with his second wife being actress Linda Christian. They had two children, including actress Romina Power. His third marriage was to Deborah Ann Minadros. Tragically, Tyrone Power's life was cut short at the age of 44 when he passed away on November 15, 1952, due to a heart attack when filming Solomon de Shabria in Madrid, Spain. His sudden death shocked fans in the film industry, leaving behind a lasting legacy in classic Hollywood drama. Although I couldn't find anything saying he missed, went missing any time, and he just died from a heart attack. Unless there's a different guy by the name Tyrone Power, this guy just had a heart attack and then just died like any other regular guy who has a heart attack. But if you guys know anything about it, leave a comment down below. I'd love to find out if there's a different Tyrone Power or something else that I missed. Yeah, Hillis Adiz. 
Born in 1857 in Leavenworth, Kansas, Yara Hilles Adiz moved in with her family to Chihuahua, Mexico during the American Civil War. As the daughter of the photographer Alfred Shia Adiz, she traveled extensively through the western frontier and Mexican wilderness, assisting her father in various different locations. After moving to Los Angeles at the age of 15, she graduated from Los Angeles High School and began teaching. Her engagement to John G. Downey faced complications, leading to a lawsuit for a breach of promise. Facing unfavorable publicity, she left for Mexico City, later moving to Santa Barbara, California. There, she married Charles A. Stork, owner of the Santa Barbara News Press. The marriage turned tumultuous, resulting in a divorce and Eddie spending time in prison. After her release, she reinvented herself as Adela Hilas Jackson and spent nearly 30 years in Texas, mainly in San Antonio, before her death in 1941. Once again, couldn't find anything missing about her, but let me know down in the comments. Glenn and Bessie Hyde Glenn and Bessie Hyde were a married couple who embarked on a fateful journey down the Colorado River in 1928. Glenn Hyde was an experienced river runner, and the couple set out on a wooden boat named the Rainbow with the intention of completing a daring adventure, running the rapids of the Grand Canyon. They aimed to set a record by becoming the first couple to navigate the entire length of the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. The Hydes began their journey in the Green River, Utah. In October 1928, however, by November of that year, the couple had disappeared without a trace. Their empty boat was discovered near the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon, leading to various theories and speculations about their mysterious disappearance. Several different theories surrounded their fate of Glenn and Bessie Hyde, including the possibility of an accident in the rapids, a voluntary disappearance, or even foul play, such as being murdered. Despite extensive research and investigations, the true circumstances of their disappearance remain unknown. And the story of Glenn and Bessie Hyde has become one of the most enduring mysteries of the Grand Canyon history. Airborne Transport DC-3 Occupants The disappearance of the Douglas DST airliner, registered as the NC-16002, occurred on the night of December 28, 1948 near the end of its scheduled flight from San Juan, Puerto Rico to Miami, Florida. The aircraft, carrying 29 passengers and three crew members, vanished without a trace. The official investigation could not determine a probable cause, and the incident remains unsolved. On the evening of December 27th, Captain Robert Lindquist, assisted by co-pilot Ernest Hill and stewardess Mary Burke, reported technical issues with the aircraft, but proceeded to take off plans anyways. The plane eventually departed after resolving communication problems and circled San Juan before confirming its route to Miami. However, subsequent calls from San Juan went unanswered. At 4.13, Lindquist reported being 50 miles south of Miami, but the transmission was not heard in Miami. The aircraft had limited fuel remaining, and the wind change information relayed to them suggested they might have drifted off course. Two bodies found south of Guantanamo Bay on January 4, 1949, added to the mystery. Though their connection to the missing plane was uncertain, the aircraft, its crew, and the passengers were never found. Over the years, this disappearance has been linked to the Bermuda Triangle, and while a plane similar to the DC-3 has discovered in the area, it remains unverified whether it is the lost aircraft. April Fab April Fab was a 13-year-old girl who disappeared on April 8, 1969 in Norfolk, England. She was last seen riding her bicycle near her home in Metton, a small village in Norfolk. April was on her way to visit her sister at a nearby farm, a route that she was familiar with and had taken many times before. Despite extensive searches and investigations, April Fab's disappearance remains unsolved and her whereabouts remain unknown. The case received widespread attention, and various different theories and speculations have been proposed over the years, but no conclusive evidence has been found to explain her disappearance. The mystery of April Fab's disappearance continues to be a topic of discussion and interest in the context of unsolved missing persons cases, but she was most likely abducted or just got lost on her own and then got later abducted, sadly. Spencer and Hobley the case of Patricia Spencer and Pamili Hobley involves the mysterious disappearance of two American teenagers on Halloween, October 31, 1969, in Oscada, Iscos County, Michigan. Patricia Spencer, who was 16 at the time, and Pamili Hobley, who was 15 at the time, were not considered friends at the time they vanished. Despite extensive investigations, their bodies were never recovered, and it is believed that they have made them the victims of a homicide. Patricia Spencer was described as 16 years old, born on January 10, 1953, with brownish blonde hair and blue eyes. She was estimated to be about 5'3 to 5'4 tall. 
However, she weighed between 120 and 145 pounds, and Pamela Hobley, who was 15 at the time, born on May 24, 1954, and she had brown hair and eyes, standing between 5'6 and 5'8 inches tall, weighing about 110 to 115 pounds. The girls were last seen walking from Oscada High School, and there were reports of them being picked up by the witness along River Road, later dropped off in downtown Oscada. Initial speculation suggested they might have run away, but their families doubted this theory, as both girls were reportedly close to their families and did not bring essential belongings when they left. Investigators suspected that the girls hitchhiked and were possibly abducted by two or more assailants, leading to their presumed murder. Despite searches and investigations, very few leads were uncovered, turning the case into a cold one. The possibility of a link to the unidentified Oakland County child killer has been explored but deemed unlikely. In 1985, police received information suggested that the two were murdered and buried near a barn, a popular location for teenage parties. A search for the area decades later yielded no detectable evidence for human remains, although I find it kind of weird that they only searched the area decades later. But anyways, other leads, including claims from individuals who allegedly gave the girls a ride, did not provide conclusive information. Mary Buhu and Pamili Hobley's sister has continued to show support for the case, participating in events like Missing in Michigan. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children used age progression techniques to illustrate estimated likelihoodness of the girls as they might look in later years. Hobley's dental charting and DNA profiles for both girls have been obtained and used for comparison with unidentified descendants. In 2013, police indicated they had a person of interest in the case but needed additional information for further progress. The case remains unsolved to this day, and efforts continue to raise awareness, gather tips, and identify the girls if they are still alive or locate their remains. Donald McKay Donald McKay was an Australian anti-drug campaigner and a local politician who became the victim of a high-profile and notorious crime. He was born on September 16, 1933 and went missing on July 15, 1977 in Griffith, New South Wales, Australia. Donald McKay was known for his vocal opposition of the legal drug trade in the Griffiths region, particularly involving organized crime and the Calbera Mafia. His activism and outspoken stance against drug-related activities drew attention and ultimately made him a target. On the evening of July 15, 1977, Donald McKay left the Griffith Hotel and was never seen again. His disappearance was linked to the efforts of the exposed illegal activities, and it was widely believed that he was murdered by individuals involved in the drug trade. Despite extensive investigations, Donald McKay's body was never found. The investigation to McKay's disappearance led to multiple different arrests and legal proceedings, but the individuals responsible for his presumed murder were never convicted. The case remains one of Australia's most infamous unsolved crimes, and over the years, there have been many different theories and speculations regarding the circumstances of McKay's disappearance, but the mystery persists, and his fate remains unknown. Eugene John Herbert Eugene John Herbert, an American-born Jesuit missionary in Sri Lanka, disappeared on August 15, 1990, during the Sri Lankan Civil War. He was known for his human rights works and went missing while traveling from Valachini to Batikola. He was likely killed along with his driver. He served in Sri Lanka since 1948, taught at St. Joseph's College, and later directed the Eastern Technical Institute. He played a prominent role in Batikola Peace Committee, advocating for the disappeared during the Civil War, and he disappeared amid escalating violence in August 1990, and his last known whereabouts were on a red Vespa scooter with his Tamal driver, Betam Francis, heading towards Bacola Bay River, but no one knows where he is to this day with no leads. Pier Biancani Pier Pierrot Biancali is a French former professional footballer who played as a defender. Biancani played for Basita, RCFC, Basilicanes, Nimes, and Paris Saint-Germain over the course of 11 years, making over 175 career appearances and scoring five goals. As a very aggressive player, Biancioli received numerous yellow and red cards during his career. In a friendly between Nimes and Toulouse in 1985, he slapped Alberto Marchino, the referee, brandished his red card, but Beyonce thought otherwise, and decided to rip apart the card and headbutt the referee, who was left with a bloody nose. Bianconi was given six-month ban in all competitions and never played for the Nemas again. Bianconi mysteriously disappeared on 29th of December 1993 at the age of 31. His car was found in the port of Bastia, but without any trace of its owner. Paul and Sarah Skiba and Lorenzo Shivers Nine-year-old Sarah Akil Skiba spent the weekend of February 5, 1999 with her father, Paul Carroll Skiba, at the home in Thornton, Colorado. Paul, the owner of Tough Movers in Westminster, shared custody of Sarah with her mother, Michelle. Russell. 
Sarah's visitation weekends were spent with her father, who had an on and off relationship with Teresa Donovan. Living on his property, Paul expressed concerns about paternity regarding Donovan's baby and planned to evict her. Seeking full custody and paternity was confirmed on February 7, 1999. Donovan called Paul's mother, Sharon, reporting that Paul, Sarah, and employee Lorenzo Deshawn Sivers haven't returned from a job in Westminster. They were last seen around 6 p.m. in Morrison. When Paul failed to return Sarah after the weekend, Donovan alerted the police. Jerry Bybee, another employee, discovered the company truck parked unusually at the Tough Movers lot on February 8th, leading to a call to the police. Law enforcement entered the lot on February 11th, where they found a puddle of motor oil and evidence tampering. The investigation initially treated the case as a kidnapping, assuming Paul took Sarah. However, evidence including blood in the truck led the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to suspect foul play. Shiver's vehicle was found in an apartment complex, and Paul's vehicle was discovered in Denver. Witnesses reported hearing a woman screaming in the truck leaving a lot multiple times. Donovan claimed on national TV that drug dealers killed Paul, implicating them in the disappearance. The case received attention from media outlets like America's Most Wanted and Nancy Grace, but still, no clue what happened to him to this day. Lei Ochi Lei Ochi was a 13-year-old girl who went missing from her home in Tuolepo, Mississippi on August 27, 1992. On that day, Lei was home alone, recovering from her eye surgery she had undergone a day earlier. Her mother, Vicki Felton, had left for work in the morning, and when she returned in the afternoon, she discovered Lei's glasses and an eye patch neatly placed on the kitchen center. Lei, however, was nowhere to be found. Vicki Felton immediately reported Lei missing, and a widespread search was launched to locate her. Despite extensive efforts, Lei's disappearance remains unsolved, and there have been no confirmed sightings or leads in the case. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance have led to various theories, but the mystery of what happened to Lei Ochi continues to baffle investigators. The case remains open, and law enforcement have periodically revisited it in an attempt to uncover new leads or information that could help solve the decades-old mystery of Lei Ochi's disappearance. Ruth Wilson Ruth Wilson was a British woman who went missing on November 27, 1995, from her home in Betchworth, Surrey, England. At the time of her disappearance, Ruth was 16 years old. She was last seen leaving her family home, and her disappearance was reported to the police by her parents. Despite extensive efforts by law enforcement and her family to locate her, Ruth Wilson has never been found, and her disappearance remains unknown. Over the years, there have been numerous appeals for information, but the circumstances surrounding her vanishing mystery remain mysterious. Ruth's case is classified as a missing person. Investigators continue to seek any leads or information that could help solve the mystery of her disappearance. Amy Rowe Betchel Amy Rowe Betchel was an American woman who went missing on July 24, 1997 in Lander, Wyoming. At the time of her disappearance, Amy was 24 years old and was a former rummer up in the Miss Wyoming pageant. She was married to Steve Betchel, a rock climbing guide. Amy was last seen in the morning while jogging alone in the Sichon National Forest. Her car was later found parked at the trailhead, with her personal belongings, including her dog, inside. Despite extensive searches and investigations, Amy Rowe Betchel's disappearance remains unsolved. The circumstances surrounding her vanishing have led to various theories, but no conclusive evidence or information has been found to determine what happened to her. The case still remains open to this day. Forrest Shab. Forrest Shab, known by his stage name D.Y., was a Canadian rapper born in 1984 and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia. He signed to CP Records in 2009, and his stage name D.Y. is derived from his nickname Die Young. D.Y. began his music career independently at the age of 14, winning MAC competitions and releasing solo material. In cooperation with CP Records against artist Billy, D.Y. was working on his album. His first single, Passenger, featuring CP Records artist Danny Fernandez, was released on October 2009. Following its release, he was featured in Billboard's February 19, 2010 issue as the best emerging Canadian artist. A remix version by DJ Jetty was also released on November 18, 2010. DY was reported missing in Mexico. In mid-August 2010, he made plans to fly to Mexico and disappeared, with no one hearing from him for months. Canadian police were investigating his whereabouts, and on December 10, 2010, his family expressed grave concern about his disappearance. Various media sources speculated that his disappearance might be related to drugs and links to organized crime. Shortly before his missing, DUI shot a music video for his single, second single, That's My Spot. Featuring former Danity King crime member D. Woods, his contract with CP Records was terminated just before his disappearance. Hannah Up 
is an American woman known for experiencing disassociative few episodes. She first gained attention in 2008 when she went missing in New York City. Up, a 23-year-old teacher, disappeared for three weeks, during which time she was unable to recall her identity. On August 28, 2008, Up was last seen leaving her apartment in Manhattan. She was reported missing, and her disappearance attracted media coverage. Authorities found her three weeks later in the water off Staten Island. During this period, Up was unable to remember her name, identity, or how she ended up there. She was diagnosed with disassociative figure, a rare psychiatric disorder characterized by amnesia and sudden unexpected travel. After being found, Up received treatment and support. Her case brought attention because it was weird to just have her disappear like that and not have anything. So, was it really disassociative disorder or something else more sinister? Jimmy Hoffa Jimmy Hoffa was an American labor union leader and president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, one of the largest and most influential labor unions in the United States. Hoffa became a prominent figure in the labor movement during the mid-20th century. Born on February 14, 1913 in Brazil, India, he rose to power as a strong and controversial union leader. Hoffa's leadership and the Teamsters was marked by both achievements for workers, such as improved wages and benefits and allegations of corruption and ties to organized crime. His confrontational style and legal troubles led to his imprisonment in 1967 for jury tampering, fraud, and other charges. In 1971, Richard Nixon commuted Hoffa's sentence with the condition that he would not engage in union activity until 1980. However, Hoffa mysteriously disappeared on July 30, 1975, and was last seen outside the Marcus Red Fox restaurant in Bloomfield Township, a suburb of Detroit, Michigan. Despite extensive investigations and numerous theories about his disappearance, Jimmy Hoffa's fate remains unknown, and he was declared legally dead in 1982, but still no one knows where he went, and the mystery surrounding his disappearance has fueled speculation and inspired various books, movies, and documentaries over the years. The case remains one of the most enduring mysteries in American criminal history. Xavier Dupont is a Frenchman who gained notoriety due to his mysterious disappearance of his wife and four children. Born on January 9, 1961 in Versailles, France, Dupont de Leongis was a count and came from an aristocratic family. The case came to public attention in April 2011 when the bodies of his wife, Agnes, and their four children were discovered buried in the backyard of their family home in Nantes, France. Autopsies revealed that their victims had been shot to death. However, Xavier was nowhere to be found. Before the discovery of the bodies, Dupont had allegedly told friends and family that the family was moving to the United States due to his work. He also reportedly sent letters to close relatives and to the children's school, explaining that the family was entering a witness protection program. The case quickly garnered media attention, and Dupont became the subject of an international manhunt. However, despite reported sightings and investigations, his whereabouts remained unknown, and the case has fueled speculation and theories about his possible escape, S-word, or a new identity. As the last knowledge of today, Xavier Dupont is a fugitive, and the case remains unsolved and still open. Mr. Cruel Mr. Cruel is the nickname given to an unidentified Australian serial offender who committed a series of crimes in the late 1980s and early 1990s. His crimes primarily involved home invasions, abductions, SAs, and, in some cases, murder. The moniker Mr. Cruel was coined by the media due to the brutal nature of his crimes. His known crimes occurred between 1985 and 1991, targeting families in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. The crimes involved breaking into homes, tying up victims, and committing SA. Notably, he abducted and released one victim in 1987 and another in 1990. The perpetrator's identity remains unknown, and he has never been apprehended, making the case one of Australia's most infamous unsolved mysteries. Mr. Cruel displayed a methodical and well-planned approach to his crimes, wearing a distinctive outfit that included a dark-colored ski mask and other disguises. He seemed to have knowledge of his victims' routines using this information during his attacks. Despite extensive investigations, the identity of Mr. Crew remains unknown and the case has not been solved. Some investigators have explored potential connections between Mr. Cruel and other unsolved crimes, but definitive links to the other crimes have not been established. The series of crimes have had a significant impact on the community, leading to heightened concerns about home security. The lack of resolution has fueled ongoing public interest and speculation about the perpetrator's identity and motives. And all right, that's all I'm going to be covering for this tier and for this video. But thank you once again for Poi for reaching out and uh, letting me be part of this video. And if you want to see more icebergs, I have some on my channel. But 
Anyways, I'm handing it back to Boy. Thanks, Nuke. Let's finish this iceberg. Layer 5. Jared Negri. Jared Negri, a 12-year-old Boy Scout, disappeared on July 19th, 1991 during a hiking trip in the San Bernardino National Forest in California. Jared, along with a group of fellow scouts and a scout leader, was hiking to the summit of Mount San Gorgonio, the highest peak in Southern California. During the hike, Jared fell behind and was separated from the group. When the scout leader realized Jared was missing, a search was initiated, but it was already getting dark. And then, despite like truly extensive search efforts involving hundreds of volunteers, helicopters, and search dogs, only a few clues were found. His camera, which contained a haunting final photo of himself and some candy wrappers. The rugged and vast wilderness of the area posed significant challenges for the search teams. Jared's disappearance remains unsolved, leaving a lingering mystery in the heart of California's wilderness. Scott Smith Scott Smith, the bassist for the Canadian rock band Loverboy, met a tragic end in a horroring incident at sea. On November 30th, 2000, while sailing from Vancouver, British Columbia, to Mexico, Smith was swept overboard by a massive wave near San Francisco's Ocean Beach. The 45-year-old musician's disappearance was a shocking event that left his friends, family, and fans in despair. Smith's friends aboard the boat, including his longtime friend Bill Ellis, recounted the terrifying moment when a wave hit and caused the boat to list, resulting in Smith being washed overboard along with the boat's wheel. Despite immediate efforts to locate him, including a prompt response from the Coast Guard with helicopters and vessels, the search was hampered by severe weather conditions, including massive waves and fog. The search for Scott Smith was extensive, covering a vast sea, but was eventually called off. His friends and family continued to search, holding on to hope, but he was never found. The loss of Scott Smith left a profound impact on the band Loverboy, with their future uncertain at the time. Smith's disappearance at sea is a a pretty stark reminder of the unpredictability and power of nature. I mean, that reminds me of that one Bible story where Jesus calmed the sea. Bro, where, where was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a beautiful story. The one about Jesus, not about Scott Smith. That was tragic. Jenny Sheok. Jenny Sheok Shang Kid's story is one marked by tragedy and a chilling crime. She was a simple, hardworking waitress at the Odeon Bar and Restaurant in Northbridge Road, Singapore. Her life took a dark turn when she met Sunny Ang Su Swan. By the way, guys, I am totally pronouncing all these names wrong and I am so, so sorry. I am trying my best here. <laughs> I'm just, like I said, I'm very, very white. I'm a very white uh, guy. <laughs> you can tell if you go follow my Instagram. Anyways, her life took a dark turn when she met Sunny Ang Su Swan, a man whose background was as complex as it was troubled. Despite his education and apparent sophistication, Aang's life was riddled with recklessness and legal troubles. Jenny and Aang's relationship progressed quickly, but it was underpinned by Aang's sinister motives. On August 27th, 1963, during a diving trip near the sister's island, Jenny mysteriously disappeared. All that was found was a severed flipper, suggesting foul play. The circumstances of her disappearance pointed towards a planned murder, orchestrated by Aang, who had taken out multiple insurance policies on Jenny, amounting to a significant amount of money. The case against Aang was circumstantial but compelling. He had insured Jenny for large amounts, even making her sign a will that left everything to his mother. The insurance policies were extended or taken out shortly before the diving trip, a trip that turned fatal for Jenny. Aang's trial in April 1965 in Singapore was sensational, focusing on these circumstantial pieces of evidence. Despite the lack of a body, the evidence suggested that Jenny had been a victim of a premeditated murder, with Aang standing to gain financially from her death. The trial highlighted the depths of Aang's deception and the tragic fate that befell Jenny Chook at the hands of someone that she trusted. Oscar Linkson. Oscar Linkson's life and disappearance are deeply intertwined with the history of early 20th century football and the First World War. Born in the late 19th century, Linkson began his football career with Barnet and Alston and later joined Manchester United in 1908. Yeah, this is like uh, the, the real football Americans. His footballing prowess was evident as he played a pivotal role in Manchester United's success, including their first division title win in the 1910 to 11 season. However, Linkson's football career was interrupted by the outbreak of the First World War. He enlisted in the 1st Football Battalion of the Middlesex Regiment, a unit formed under the Palace Battalion scheme and comprised entirely of sportsmen. This battalion included other notable footballers like Walter Toll and Vivian Woodward. Tragically, on August 8th, 1916, during the brutal Battle of the Somme, Private Oscar Linkson went missing in action while fighting to seize Guillemont Station. His disappearance amidst one of the war's fiercest battles added a pretty somber note to his legacy. His body was never found and he was officially recorded as a missing presumed dead, a fate shared by many soldiers in the chaos of World War I. 
Jack Black, not that one. Jack Black's life story reads like a novel filled with adventure, crime, and introspection. Born in 1871 in Canada and later becoming an American hobo and professional burglar, Black's journey through the underworld of crime is vividly depicted in his autobiography, You Can't Win. The book, published in 1926, offers a candid and often grim view of his life as a cross-country stick-up man, home burglar, petty thief, and opium addict. Spending nearly 30 years as a criminal with half of that time in various prisons, Black emerged not only as a writer, but also as a vocal advocate for prison reform. His autobiography served as both a cautionary tale for those in the life of crime and a critical commentary on the futility of the prison system. In 1932, Jack Black's life took a tragic turn. Plagued by the grim realities he had lived through and written about, he reportedly disappeared in what is believed to be a suicide. He had mentioned to friends that if life became unbearable, he would row out into New York Harbor and drown himself with the weights tied to his feet. His disappearance and presumed death cast a somber end to the life of a man who had seen the darkest sides of society and tried, in his way, to light a path for others out of it. His phrase, ready for the river, poignantly encapsulates his state of mind and the final choice he is believed to have made. Barbara Newell Follett Barbara Newell Follett was a prodigious young author who vanished in 1939, leaving behind a world of literary promise. Born on March 4, 1914, Barbara was a child prodigy in the world of literature, publishing her first novel, The House Without Windows, at the age of 12. Her work was celebrated for its imaginative and lyrical quality. Barbara's life, however, took a turbulent turn in her teenage years, marked by personal and financial difficulties. In 1939, at the age of 25, after an argument with her husband, she left her home in Brookline, Massachusetts with just $30 and was never seen again. Her disappearance remains shrouded in mystery. Some speculate she might have started a new life elsewhere, while others fear a more tragic fate. Barbara Nua Follett's story is a poignant reminder of the fragility and early success and the enduring enigma of her disappearance. Lee Yan. Um, I couldn't find anything on this one. <laughs> My bad, guys. I did, I did look it over. I did research this, but I couldn't find anything about Lee Yan. Haji Sulong. Haji Sulong, born in 1895, was a prominent Muslim leader and advocate for the rights of the Malay Muslim minority in Thailand's southern provinces. In the late 1940s, he became a leading figure in the campaign for the rights and anatomy of the Malay speaking Muslim majority in the Patini region of Thailand. Haji Sulong disappeared after mysterious circumstances in 1954. His disappearance is believed to be politically motivated, as it occurred after he submitted a petition to the Thai government outlining the demands of the Patani people, including including cultural and religious rights, which, by the way, everybody should have. I want to advocate for that as well, that I, I, uh, I agree. I think that everybody should have a right to their religion. <laughs> as long as their practicing of that religion doesn't impede other people's rights for like freedom and survival and being treated like a person. Anyways, Sulong's advocacy was seen as a challenge to the Thai government's policies of assimilation and centralization. The disappearance of Haji Sulong remains a significant and contentious issue in southern Thailand, contributing to ongoing tensions and separatist sentiments in the region. Nicholas Jaeger. Nicholas Jaeger, a renowned French mountaineer and mountain guide, was born on October 20th, 1946 in Boulogne, Billancourt, France. The son of photographer Janine Napice, Jaeger was known for his extraordinary achievements in the world of alpinism, particularly in the Mount Blanc Massif, where he accomplished more than 100 solo ascents. I guess an ascent is like, you know, like when you like climb up the mountain, and a solo one is like where you do it by yourself, including over a dozen first ascents. Jaeger's mountaineering career was marked by a significant accomplishments. In 1975, he became a mountain guide, and three years later, he participated in the first French ascent of Mount Everest, a team led by Pierre Mazoud. In 1978, along with Jean Afanasif, he made a groundbreaking achievement by climbing and then skiing down from the south coal of Everest, one of the first to do so on an 8,000er mountain. His adventurous spirit and commitment to understanding the limits of human endurance led him to spend 60 days in solitude at an altitude of 6,700 meters, which is 22,000 feet. On Haskaran in 1979, this experience aimed at studying the effects of super acclimation was detailed in his publication Carnets de Solitude. Tragically, on April 27th, 1980, during an attempted ascent of Le Host Char in Nepal, Nicholas Jaeger was seen for the last time at an altitude of 8,200 meters, which is 26,900 feet. He is presumed dead following this expedition. Jaeger's disappearance and presumed death on Lhotse Char adds a somber note to his legacy as a pioneering and fearless mountaineer. This guy is awesome. I just want to say, like, if I was not, like, a, a pussy American, this would be, like, my dream life. Like, I I, I, I would love to, to just explore mountains. That sounds so just peaceful and beautiful. Oh my gosh, bro. 
Thomas A. Much. Thomas A. Much, who lived from 1931 to 1980, was an American planetary scientist and leader of the Viking mission to Mars. He was known for his significant contributions to the exploration of Mars in planetary geology. Much's tragic death occurred not due to a mysterious disappearance, but in a mountaineering accident, so maybe it shouldn't be on this list, but whatever. In October 1980, Much was climbing Mount Nun, a peak in the Indian Himalayas, when he encountered an accident. The specific events of the incident are not widely documented, but it is known that he did die during this expedition. His death was a loss to the scientific community, particularly in the field of planetary science, where his work had made a substantial impact. Angel Cruz. Angel Cruz, a former professional basketball player from New York, mysteriously disappeared in Santeria, Puerto Rico on May 1st, 1998. A pretty celebrated athlete, Cruz played in the 1988 Summer Olympics and two FIBA World Tournaments before retiring in 1993. Post-retirement, he faced challenges adjusting to a new life, eventually becoming involved with drugs. Cruz went out to buy milk during a visit to relatives in Puerto Rico and never returned. His sudden disappearance left his family, including five children he was close to, seeking answers. His case, still unsolved, is being investigated by New York police. Ames Glover. Ames Glover, a five-month-old baby, disappeared under mysterious circumstances in London in 1990. On February 5th, 1990, Ames was in a car with his father, Paul Glover, near their home in South London. Paul left Ames sleeping in the car for a moment, and upon his return, Ames was gone. Despite extensive police investigations and public appeals, no trace of Ames was ever found. The case of Ames Glover remains one of London's most baffling disappearances, with various theories but no concrete evidence. Over the years, the police have revisited the case, but it remains unsolved. Kinda sad. Treveline Evans. Treveline Evans, a 52-year-old antique dealer, vanished from Langolan, North Wales in June 1990. On June 16th, 1990, she left a note on her shop door stating she would be back in two minutes, but she never returned. Her disappearance sparked a large-scale police search and media attention, but no trace of her was ever found. The case baffled investigators, as there were few clues to her whereabouts or what might have happened to her. Treveline's disappearance remains one of the most enduring mysteries in that area, with theories ranging from an accident to foul play, but with no concrete evidence to support any scenario. Annie McCarrick. Annie McCarrick, an American woman living in Ireland, disappeared in March 1993. Born in Long Island, New York, Annie was 26 years old when she vanished. She was last seen taking a bus to Enniscary, County Wicklow, and reportedly planned to go for a walk in the Wicklow Mountains. And in spite of extensive searches and investigations, no trace of Annie was found. Her disappearance is like one of the most like high-profile cases in Ireland, often cited in discussions about missing women in the country during the 1990s. The lack of evidence and clear leads has left her family and investigators unfortunately, with a lot of unanswered questions. Jody Huizentritt. Jody Huizentritt, a television news anchor, disappeared on June 27th, 1995 from Mason City, Iowa. At the age of 27, she was reportedly on her way to work early in the morning when she vanished. Her car was found in the parking lot of her apartment complex, and there were signs of a struggle near her vehicle. There were pretty extensive investigations and media coverage, but no suspects have been identified, and her whereabouts are still unknown. Jody's case has become one of the most well-known missing persons cases in the United States, with continued interest and speculation about what happened to her. Bobby Dunbar. Bobby Dunbar was a four-year-old boy who disappeared during a family trip in Louisiana in 1912. After a eight-month nationwide search, a boy was found in Mississippi and identified by the Dunbars as their son. However, another woman, Julia Anderson, claimed the boy was her son, Bruce Anderson. The case became a national sensation involving court battles and conflicting claims. In 2004, DNA tests revealed that the boy identified as Bobby Dunbar was not related to the Dunbar family, suggesting that the real Bobby Dunbar never returned home in his face is still unknown. That's kind of sad, man. All of these are pretty sad, man. Okay, that was layer 5. Let's get into layer 6. Liu Mingang. Liu Mingang was a politician and physician in the Republic of China and Manchukuo. Born in 1881 in Qinhuangdo, Hebei, he served as the 8th Republican mayor of Beijing and later accepted a role as the collaborationist governor of Rehi province under the Japanese-established Manchukuo. After his tenure as governor, which lasted until July 1937, Liu Mingang's whereabouts became unknown, and his disappearance is still completely just mysterious. Serious. Francis Hong Yongho. Francis Hong Yongho, a Catholic bishop from North Korea, disappeared in the 1960s under the repressive regime. Ordained as the Bishop of Pyongyang in 1944, he was detained by the North Korean government during the Korean War. His fate after detention remains a mystery, reflecting the harsh reality of religious persecution in North Korea. The Vatican continued to list him as the Bishop of Pyongyang until 2013, indicating the enduring uncertainty surrounding his disappearance. His case is emblematic of the many who vanished in North Korea's notorious history of human rights abuses. 
Henry Borinsky. Henry Borinsky, a Polish priest, disappeared in Bradford, England in 1953. Borinsky, who ministered to the Polish community post-World War II, vanished without a trace after receiving a mysterious phone call. Some theories suggest he may have been abducted or, or killed by Polish communist agents given the Cold War context. Despite several leads and extensive investigations, his fate remains unknown and his disappearance is one of the enduring unsolved mysteries in the UK's post-war history, kind of highlighting the era's geopolitical tensions. Morgan Nick. Morgan Nick, a six-year-old girl from Arkansas, USA, disappeared in 1995, sparking a massive search and investigation. She was last seen playing at a Little League baseball game in Alma before she vanished. Her disappearance led to the creation of the Morgan Nick Foundation, which aids in the search of missing children. And even though there was a lot of efforts and like national media attention, Morgan's whereabouts are still unknown. Her case has become emblematic of the issue of missing children in the U.S., with her story continuing to resonate deeply across the nation. Margaret Peg Kilcon. Margaret Peg Kilcon, a 50-year-old cardiologist, disappeared from her secluded vacation home in Nantucket, Massachusetts on January 26, 1980. Kilcon, experiencing severe mental stress and possibly suffering from depression or mania, was last seen going to bed around 10 or 10.30 p.m. When her brother came to check on her and, like, wake her up for church the next morning, she was gone, leaving behind her winter boots, coat, bicycle, and car. Before her disappearance, Kilcon exhibited unusual behavior, including a large purchase of groceries and liquor, and told people at a party and press conference to announce a medical discovery, though she hadn't made arrangements for such an event. Her passport, checkbook, and other items were later found near her home in a previously searched area, so she must have came back after they already searched it and put him there. A theory is that Kilcon might have walked into the ocean, either intentionally or during a delusional state. However, some investigators believe she could be still alive, and she just left of her own accord. She was declared legally dead in 1989 leaving behind a pretty significant estate. Foul play is not suspected in her case. Thomas Shikowitz. The case of Thomas Shikowitz, also known as Tomek, is a deeply intriguing and emotional story. Born in Poland, Tomek disappeared at the age of four on March 17, 1990. He was playing in his front yard and went missing around 5 p.m. His father, supervising him, had left him out of sight for only 15 minutes. A pretty extensive search was launched, but with limited help from the authorities at the time, they didn't find anything. Except for the fact that distinctive footmarks from Tomek's rubber rain shoes, which had bare patterns on the soles, were found near the house leading to a road and giving the impression that he stood there for a while. Years later, Tomek's mother, Mrs. Jolanta Shiswitz, still holds on to hope for his return. An age-progressed image of Tomek was created to help identify what he might look like as an adult. This image led to a significant lead when a Facebook page dedicated to Tomek's case received a photograph from someone claiming to know Tomek's whereabouts, suggesting he might be Ryan M. Pitt, an American soldier and Medal of Honor recipient. However, the account that made this message was fake and was soon deleted. Efforts to connect with Ryan M. Pitts were initially met with some response, but ceased when specific questions about identifying marks and blood type were raised. Ryan has not been confirmed or denied any connection to Tomek. Despite attempts by the Aitaika Foundation and Interpol to resolve the case through DNA testing, no conclusive evidence has been processed, due to the lack of agreement for such actions. The case is still unsolved, sadly. Bro, I say now that I, I am praying for all these, like, cases. This is so, like, sad, and it's, like, interesting and, like, creepy and stuff, but it's so sad. And I've been praying to Jesus Christ for all these people. God, please help the families of all these people who went missing and be with them and support them and comfort them. Amen. Anyways, let's get into layer seven, the final layer. Alan Can. Alan Can, a French singer, disappeared on April 14th, 1990. He was last seen at the Rue de la Pompe metro station in Paris. Born Alan Michel Zisa in 1944, Ken was raised by his mother and stepfather. His music career began in the early 1960s and transitioned into glam rock in the 1970s, influenced by artists like David Bowie. Despite his disappearance, his fate remains unknown and his case is listed among notable missing persons, cases that are unsolved. Akpan Utek. Akpan Utek, a colonel in the Biafran army, was last seen at a party in Lagos in early 1970, shortly after the surrender of Biafra to Nigeria. His disappearance remains a mystery. A strategic and successful military figure, Utek played a significant role in the Nigerian Civil War, and his disappearance, there's not a lot of like information about it. Don Taxe. Don Taxe, an American numismatist and historian, disappeared around 1977. He was known for his significant contributions to numismatics through various reference works. Prior to his disappearance, Taxe had been introduced to Indian spirituality and became a Rajneeshi, subsequently immigrating to India. His withdrawal from society and subsequent disappearance remain a mystery. Historian Carl Moulton speculated that Taxe might have liquidated his property to donate his wealth to the Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh and described him as 
as brainwashed and untraceable. The exact details of Taxate's fate after moving to India are unknown. Upali Wujiwardeen. Upali Wujiwardeen, a Sri Lankan business magnate, disappeared on February 13th, 1983, when his private Learjet vanished over the Straits of Malacca shortly after leaving Malaysia en route to Colombo. Wujiwardeen was a prominent entrepreneur and founder of the Upali Group, involved in various businesses involving confectionery, electronics, and aviation, and despite search efforts, no trace of the aircraft or its occupants was found, and Wujiwardeen's fate remains one of Sri Lanka's most enduring mysteries. His disappearance occurred at the peak of his career, leaving a significant impact on the whole nation business landscape. <gasps> Guys, we just finished this iceberg. Oh my gosh, this is my longest video yet, I think. Well, it might not be, but the recording is the longest one I've ever done. The raw recording here without it, any editing is three hours. Dude, this is crazy. I hope you guys like this extra, extra long video. Everybody have a great night. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Seriously, have a great night. Sleep well and sweet dreams.